As an independent manga artist working from his home in Tokyo, he makes a living creating art and animation based on popular games. But he is already tired of living like this. The fast train network finally reached his native village, so he decided to move there and start a new life. Until now, he had been forced to paint in order to have enough for a living, but he liked working in his own garden much more. He was very happy with his new, quiet and peaceful life, but before he could notice it, he was standing in the middle of the forest. The man folded his arms on his chest and thought about what was happening now. The man does not understand anything, so he sits silently and thinks. The man remembers his name, age and where he lives. He got into some kind of accident while picking herbs in the mountains, although it doesn't look like his body was harmed in any way. The man scratches his head and thinks about what kind of nonsense this is. The terrain is completely flat, so it's not mountains, but there are no such places near his house. He can't just chill out here, and he won't die for long. There's nothing here, so all you need to do is stumble upon a bear. My throat is dry, and there is nothing in my pockets that could be useful. When he gets hungry, he will have no food, no water, nothing at all. Of course, there are some mushrooms growing here, but he has never seen such. At this rate, he will become a corpse. It's pretty bad. We need to get out of this forest, find the nearest village or at least something. Suddenly, the man notices a skeleton in armor in which a sword was stuck. The man thought about what happened here, and he realized that it was not good that he had found a corpse. He is very sorry about the death of the skeleton, but now he is in a difficult position so he asks for permission to search the skeleton's bag. After a while, the man finds a dagger and a ring in the bag. He got a weapon, but now the biggest problem is food. Then the man pays attention to the skeleton's armor and tries to figure out what's wrong with that armor. No matter how you look at it, this is a real metal armor because there are even traces of damage and repair. The man understands that, really, this is a trap and someone is hunting for his head. But why would someone suddenly give up a middle-aged unemployed man from the countryside? Even if it's some kind of scam, he doesn't have any money behind his back. Could it be that this is a different world, so he should try something for a joke? The man stretches out his hand and tries to reveal his status. He understands that if he says so, a panel should appear. Suddenly, a status bar appears in front of the man. He understands that it really worked. He reads the information in his window. However, the man wonders where his level of health, mana, skills are and there are not even spells. And then he tries to figure out what else Shangri-La is. Of all this, he only knows Shangri-La's online store. Then the man tenses up and clicks on the word of the Shangri-La online store. Suddenly, another window appears. The man realizes that this is indeed the site that he has used so often. Shangri-La's homepage opened up to him. Shangri-La is an all profile online store promoting everything from books and food, to clothes, toys, new and used cars and trucks, and even heavy industry equipment. They really have absolutely everything. He's surprised that he actually has a skill like this, which is a bit cheesy. Then the man clicks on the inventory label, and a new inventory window opens for him. The man says that since this is an inventory, it means that you can put things in it. Then the young man notices a sword lying next to the skeleton. He touches the inventory window with this sword and suddenly this sword is absorbed into the inventory window. The man is surprised that the sword was pulled in. Then he looks at the inventory window, in which a rusty sword appears in the amount of one piece. Then the man clicks on the word of the rusty sword and suddenly another window appears, in which a choice is given, take the sword or throw it away. The man clicks on the function of taking the sword. The next moment, a rusty sword appears right in his hand. The man is happy and says that it is very convenient. Then he decides to try to click on the trash button. The next moment, a rusty sword appears in the trash menu. The man says that the sword moved here. Then Kanishi, that's the name of the main character, noticed some unusual button with a spiral. Then a new window appears in which the main character is asked if he really wants to delete these objects. Kanishi wondered if it was some kind of computer. He'll probably be able to keep things here for a while until they are automatically deleted. So he has inventory and a trash can. We need to find out how many objects he can fit inside, but he at least roughly understands how it works. He wonders if it's really okay that he uses such power, because there is some kind of catch. If he just accepts it, then won't someone demand payment for it? He says that, although, if he is afraid to use this strange power, he will end up like this skeleton. He shouldn't worry about it too much, it's better to use it while he can use it. A man enters an online store and adds packages of buns with a secret and three packs of milk to the basket. The man is surprised that he needs 2,500 yen. He presses the buy button, but a notification appears that the man does not have enough funds. Kanishi was surprised that he had no money, although it makes sense, he started penniless. He doesn't understand what to do now. 
He presses the button to replenish funds. Another window appears, but there is nothing in it. Kinishi said that the window wants him to put money here, but he doesn't have it. The man understands that hunger just stops the brain. Kinishi tries to move the rusty sword into the replenishment window, but he fails. Suddenly, a window appears asking if the man really wants to sell these objects. The man realizes that he can even sell things. He gives a rusty sword and it is written on the screen that the rusty sword will cost 100,000 yen. The man understands that this is a lot. He replenishes his balance and says that if this is true, then he no longer needs to worry about food. A man buys 2,500 yen worth of food for himself. Suddenly, products appear out of thin air. The man says that you need to eat before you think about anything else. After the meal, the man bought one shovel for 2,000 yen. Kinishi buried the skeleton and put a wooden cross on it. After the case, he prayed for the peace of the deceased. He thinks that he should be given credit, he laid it out only because he took it from him. Since he has an online store, he should check out a few things. He buys compact gas cans 3 pieces for 300 yen, clean water for 1200 yen, a portable gas stove and a pot with a lid. After a while, Kanishi buys 100 pieces of milk for food for 500 yen, as well as 12 pieces of instant ramen for 2500 yen. A man prepares ramen and says that it is a taste of modern civilization. The man starts eating and says it's good. Curry is still good, even in other worlds. Then he says that food and money will run out sooner or later, so you need to find some settlement and earn money. Then he will buy things in Shangila and sell them at higher prices. He wonders if it will work. Then the man realizes that it's time to pack up and find a way out of this forest. Suddenly, he is surrounded by wild animals. The smell of food spread for kilometers. Of course, this will attract wild animals. The young man begins to quickly look for weapons and wonder what kind of weapons he can buy. He sees the bow, but immediately says that he has never held them in his life. Then he finds the right lot and says he needs to try it. A man buys fireworks and sets them on fire on a gas stove, and then throws them directly at the monsters. Fireworks are exploding. Then the man picks up a slingshot. At this moment, a monster runs at him, but immediately the young man releases a projectile from a slingshot. The man neutralizes one monster, which turns around and runs away into the forest. Kinishi then charges two more shells to fire at the remaining wolves. Finally, the wolves escape. Kinishi falls to the ground and sighs. He says that it is too dangerous to stay here, because one day they will return. Then he looks into the forest gap and realizes that he seems to have finally found a way out. Even after leaving the forest, Kanishi has to wade through this tall grass. He thinks the best option would be to scout the area. A man buys a ladder for 2,500 yen and a telescope for 1,000 yen. Kanishi thinks it's a little expensive. He stands on the stairs and looks through a telescope, through which he notices the walls of the city. He can also clearly see the movements of people. He can easily get into the city from here. If he walks right through here, he'll come out on the road right into the city. This is not good. He has already spent almost half of all his money. He's wondering if he should buy some spices. A hundred grams of spices costs 400 prices, and maybe he can make good money by selling them in the city for silver or gold. He wonders if there is an inventory here, and then notices it and says it's just like in an RPG. Suddenly, he hears someone knocking. Kanishi is called by a young man who is riding on a cart and asks him if he is really a traveler, and is heading to Dahlia. The man was surprised that he understood the language of the locals. Kanishi replies that he is grateful for the man's offer, but he does not have money right now, and he thinks that the city is called Dahlia. The young man replies that it's probably hard for the man. But Dahlia is just around the corner, so he won't take money from him. Kanishi gets into the carriage. The young man says that he is pleased to meet and his name is Fuyo, and he is engaged in trade. The man says his name is Kanishi. Fuyo laughs and replies that the man has a strange name. He asks Kanishi if he really left his father's house and came here to trade. The man smiles and says that the young man hit the nail on the head. He thinks that for now they will agree on this version. He also knows a little bit about farming, thanks to his childhood experience. Fuyo turned to the man and said that then, if he came to trade, then why was he empty-handed and did he really have an inventory skill? Kinishi was surprised and thought it was a bit unexpected that they already knew about the inventory. He looks Fuyo to see if the young man really knows what inventory is. Fuyo replies that this is the first time he has seen a person with this skill. He asks how a man hasn't become a merchant yet if he has such a skill as inventory. Kanishi said he still works as a farmer. Of course it's a lie. He says that while they are together, he would like to ask about something. Subsequently, Kanishi learned a lot about how business is conducted in this world. It seems that in order to sell something, he needs to register with the Merchant Guild. 
The registration fee is one silver coin, although he doesn't know how much yen it is yet. After a while, the man arrives in the city of Dahlia. He helps Fuyo unload his cart. Fuyo thanks the man for his help and says that one day he will become a great merchant, but not now. Fuyo then indicates which way the hotel and the guild are located. The man thanks him, and then she tells him that he is a good guy and gives him a bag in gratitude. Fuyo opens the bag and says it's spices. He turns to Kanishi and says that he must be joking by giving away such a luxurious item. He says he will pay him right away. Kanishi refuses. Fuyo asks him to slow down and says that merchants like cheap goods but never take something for nothing, and then asks the man if he knows why. Kanishi replies that this is because there is nothing more expensive than what he got for free. Fuyo agrees. He says that if a man doesn't take the money, then he won't be able to accept anything either. He gives him two silver and six bronze coins. He says it's about market value. The man reflects that the exchange rate of gold to silver is four silver coins to one gold. Now he has a good idea of the concept of this world, but there are some disturbing rumors. He thinks that there is some kind of coalition that has monopolized the spice market. It looks like there will be problems at the beginning, but first he needs to create a support base. Then he arrives at a certain hotel and realizes that he seems to have arrived at the right place. A girl greets him and tells him if the man needs a room or if he wants to have lunch. Kanishi realizes that the girl is very sweet. The girl says that a room with food will cost a man one silver coin, and the room itself costs three bronze coins. The man says he just needs a room. The man asks if it could be that the girl is the daughter of the owner. The girl replies that she just works here. Then she asked if the young man really came looking for a supplier or maybe he was looking for a part-time job. The man said that he actually came to become a merchant. The girl says that then he should at least be able to read, write and count. The man thinks about how he could have forgotten about it. The girl thinks that he is a merchant who cannot even read and write. Then he takes out a book and says that these are some of the basic skills if a man wants to register with a merchant guild. The man says that he can read and write, but in a different language and he can also count. Then the girl says that if they have four bags, each of which contains 12 apples, then how many apples will be in the bags? Kinishi replies that there will be 48 of them. The girl says it's very cool and the man really knows how to count. She asks the man what his name is and Kanishi tells her his name. The girl says that her name is Azalea and she is very pleased to meet a man. The man then asks Azalea if he can ask her for a favor. He asks the girl to teach him to read and write. In return, he will give her some exotic treats. The girl starts to shine all over and asks if he will really give her sweet treats. After a while, the man buys a wooden box with fruit bears worth 300 yen. The girl says that her mouth is very pleased with such sweet treats. Eating these sweets, she feels like a noblewoman. The man asks if there really is a nobility here. The girl agrees and says that's exactly what it is, but it's better not to mess with them. If they catch a man with these sweets, they will immediately confiscate them. Kinishi says it's problematic. He asks if the girl will teach him to read and write. He says that the paper is probably expensive, so he will give his own. The girl agrees. Then the man buys five pieces of printed paper for 500 yen. The girl said that she just wanted to take money from the young man for the paper. Kinishi understands that it is better not to let down his guard with her, so let the girl use his paper. Kinishi thinks that the alphabet is not that much different, so everything should be fine. He even went to Ramaji. The numbers are still written in the form of a decimal number system, very similar to the Arabic ones. In this case, it will not be difficult for him to remember all this. After a while, Azalea said that she thought Mr. Kanishi couldn't write and read. The man says that this language is very similar to his native tongue. Azalea replied that, then, there would be no problems with registering with the guild. The man turned to Azalea and said that she was quite literate herself. She, s a good fit for the role of a merchant. The girl looks at the young man and asks if she knows what is the most important thing in business. The man says it's a restocking. Azalea replies that this is the correct answer. Take, for example, food, lamps, and so on. She has no idea where to buy them. However, in the case of Mr. Kanishi, she thinks there won't be any problems. Maybe she should try to become his favorite. The man replies that with an old man like him, she can forget about it, because he is old enough to be her father. Azalea smiles and says she doesn't have a father. The man apologizes to her. Azalea replies that everything is fine and he knows Kanishi is a good person. Then the man takes pen and paper and asks Azalea to sit down for exactly one second. He painted her portraits. The girl says that it is very cool and that the man draws very well, and then asks him if he can be an aristocrat. The man thinks that she did not expect such a violent reaction. Then the girl looks at Kanishi, smiles, and suddenly takes off her dress. Kanishi is very surprised. 
He starts screaming and asks the girl what she's doing. Azalea replies that the man treated her to expensive sweets and painted her portrait, and is it fair that only she gets everything? Kanishi wonders if it's okay to do this kind of thing right after teleporting to another world. The man turned to Azalea and asked what he was going to do. The girl told Kanishi that he had given a lot of things. The man asked, and so what, because it doesn't mean that you can let go of your hands. The next morning Kanishi was depressed because it had happened. He bangs his head against the wall and tries to figure out what he's doing to a young girl. Azalea at that moment asked what she was eating. It's very crunchy, and the milk is so sweet and delicious. He thinks that they will buy it too. The girl ate a one-pack granule for 540 yen and milk for 250 yen. The man says that sugar and fruits are used there, but no one will buy for a high price, and he does not want to mess with aristocrats. Azalea says it's still very tasty. Kanishi thought that Azalea looked just like an 18-year-old girl when she ate. Then he opens the status and says that he completely forgot about paying for the night. By the way, he noticed something while he was talking to her. She doesn't seem to see his status bar. She is visible only to Kaneshi. At that moment, Azalea asked the man if he meant paying for the overnight stay. The man then asked the girl if she could tell him about the local coins. Azalea agrees. If you compare the words of Azalea and the examples of the price of the past world, it turns out that one night here costs 3,000 yen. The man leaves the hotel and says that yesterday he also had to use the money, so it may soon run out. He needs to find a job soon, or he's finished. Kanishi realizes that he will have to try to join the merchant guild. This is how the young man comes to the guild. He goes inside and sees several people. One man asks a guild employee to lend him money, but the employee says, apologizing, that he cannot lend them money. Then the man walks up to the front desk. The receptionist girl greets Kanishi and asks him what he asked about. Kanishi sits down and says that he would like to join the guild. The girl says that she understood the man, and then hands him a sheet and paper and asks him to fill out these papers. As for the entrance fee, it will cost one silver coin. Kanishi realizes that 50,000 yen, of course, hits the wallet. The man asks the girl if it is possible to pay in installments. The girl agrees. A man thinks that paying in 10 parts is grace. Then he looks at the application that needs to be filled out by hand. So in this world they have not yet learned how to type. Name, age, and so on. Kanishi will indicate daily as place of birth, because he does not know any more places. Kanishi then sees arithmetic examples. He is surprised, because the whole text consists of addition and multiplication. Then he executes the text and hands it over to the administrator. She asks him to wait a bit. Kanishi agrees and thinks it was easy. Then the receptionist returns and apologizes to the young man for waiting. She gives the man confirmation that he has joined the guild. Kanishi picks up a stone and remembers Fuyo with the same stone. The girl adds that while working as a trader, he must necessarily wear it in a prominent place. She also says that the registration is over. Kanishi thinks he can trade without any problems now. Then he turns to the girl, apologizing, and asks where their market is. After a while, the man comes to the right place. He thinks that it is still very important to inspect the market. There is no fish that cannot be stored. Fruits, vegetables, and even precious stones and much more. Everything lies together, which is very cool. Kinishi approaches the paper shop. The dealer points to the stains and says that they simply contain originality. Kinishi thinks that for one darkened leaf, one copper coin, that is, a thousand yen. Then Kanishi goes to another shop where a girl sells plates and says that with them you can feel like a nobleman. Kanishi thinks that a plate without a pattern costs 5,000 yen for a square silver coin, but with a pattern it is twice as expensive. Kanishi walks past a knife shop. The man says that this knife can cut almost anything. Kanishi thinks that a small knife is worth one silver coin, that is, 50,000 yen. Knives are more expensive, considering that pattern plates are gathering dust on the shelves. Only commoners come here, and they cannot afford to buy more expensive things. Suddenly, his thoughts are distracted by a girl who offers a man to buy beautiful fruits of three colors. Onas asks him if he wants to buy one. One slide of ten pieces is worth one copper coin. Kanishi says he wants to try all kinds, so he asks the girl to wrap him all three kinds of three pieces. The girl agrees, and then gives him a bag of fruit. Kanishi thinks he's buying what he bought, but he doesn't know what these fruits are called. They have red, green and yellow colors. Judging by the inventory, they are called Yablos and Yablos. After a while, he brings these azalea fruits. The girl says it's an apple tree. The girl thanks the man for the fruit. They are sweet and very tasty. Kanishi is surprised that there are so many people in the hotel. The man remembers the price of apples and realizes that he does not think that this is the apple that Azalea was talking about. 
The man gets up from the table and says that he will return to his room soon. Azalea asks Kanishi if he was really able to join the guild. The man waves the proof that he has joined the guild. Azalea was happy, and all the visitors were happy that the girl was in a good mood. After a while, the young man was in his room. He bought one rope for 60 yen. He found out how things are on the market, and tomorrow he will start preparing for trading. His goal is to invest 3,000 yen and receive 10,000 yen. It is not necessary to receive mountains of money as long as there is enough to buy on the Shangri-La website. That is why the most important thing is to lead a measured life in another world. He decides to see if he can do it. The next morning, Azalea bursts into Kanishi's room and asks him what kind of noise he's making here and what he's doing. Kanishi says he set up a counter here. The girl was surprised that Kanishi was also a builder. The man agrees, and then Azalea says that there are so many unusual tools here. Kanishi thinks it's a good thing that he split the registration fee and was able to buy materials with the remaining money. He bought a saw, a screwdriver, planks, logs, ropes, fiber cloth, hemp, and more. The man said that he had damaged the room, and then he would clean up all the sawdust. Azalea agrees. Then the man tied a shelf. He said that he had made the counter and it remained to decide what he would sell. Suddenly, the girl notices the clothespins and asks what they are and she wants it too. She says that the same thing is used to secure the laundry after washing. Kanishi agrees and asks if they have something similar. Azalea agrees and says that she knows only those that are made from thin branches. They are broken and tied with a rope, but they fall down. She asks if a man will try it. Kanishi is surprised and wonders if he will be able to rise on this. He has prepared what can be sold on Shangrel's website. This time he will try to sell it, but it remains to find a place. Then he sees an empty seat and asks the woman sitting next to him if it is occupied. The woman tells the young man that he can stay here. Then he removes the counter from the inventory. The woman calls the young man and asks if he really has an inventory, because he took the thing out of nowhere. The young man agrees and says that even though it is small, the woman says that she envies him, because you need to carry things in your hands. Then she looks at the things and says that the man has good things. She turns to the young man and asks if this is used to fasten underwear. A woman asks a man how much they cost. Kanishi replies that for two clothespins, one copper coin, that is, 1,000 yen. The woman asks for six pieces. Kanishi is surprised and asks the woman if she will really take it. The woman agrees and says that there is no rule anywhere that prohibits buying from neighbors. After a while, Kanishi sold 30 clothespins before lunch and earned 15,000 yen. He thought it would be enough to sell for 10,000 yen a day, but it seems that he can only feed himself with clothespins. He thought that if they still buy, then other merchants will start making something similar, so they will need to come up with something. Suddenly, a man with a bag and a sword approaches Kanishi and asks Kanishi if he can show a knife. Kanishi realizes that he has a sword on his belt but lacks armor, but most likely this guy is a warrior or something like that. He's probably from a high class, so he'd better speak politely. Kanishi holds out the knife and says it's brand new. The young man picks it up and starts examining it. Kanishi says that this knife is worth two silver coins, that is, 100,000 yen. The young man said that it was quite expensive, but he had never seen such a beautiful blade, so he could not object. However, he would like a bigger knife. Kanishi thought about the fact that in his past world there was a law on the control of possession of cold steel and firearms, so there was no way to buy a knife on Shangri-La anymore. The man says that if you need a big one, he can only offer one. He buys a wide-bladed knife that costs 25,000 yen. The young man was very surprised and asked how much it would cost. Kanishi said it was worth one gold coin, that is, 200,000 yen. The young man shrank and said that it was expensive, but he was very handsome. Kanishi thinks the young man seems to be rushing around, but he can't lower the price. My heart is sinking, but you need to charge the buyer, which can pay a lot. The young man sighs and says that he is buying it. Kanishi says it's a great choice. A young man can receive a whetstone as a gift. The man points to two stones, the brown one is rougher and the green one is smaller. The young man said they seemed comfortable. Kanishi thanked the young man for the purchase. After a while, the young man comes to the hotel. He gives Azalea money for five nights. The girl asks if the young man really earned it. Kanishi agrees. Azalea notices that he has changed his clothes. After a while, the young man sits in his room and reads books. He says that he has money, changed his clothes, but he wants to take a hot bath. It is said that the bath here is available only to the royal family in the court. Then he turns on the online store in the status window and clicks on the search bar to find a steel barrel. The man is surprised that there is even a barrel for sale here. If you fill it with water from the river and then heat it over a fire, it should work. 
If you continue like this, you should find a more profitable way to sell goods. Then he thinks about jewelry. Silver is quite expensive in this world. The next day, after much thought, he hangs out a necklace, brooches and so on in his shop. He sells five of them for 10,000 yen. He thinks that they are without diamonds and crystals, but polished zirkin should also build well. He hopes that it will interest women's hearts. Kinishi then notices a girl who is an anthropomorph. Usually the women here wear a long skirt, but this girl has wool and clothes on top, so she must be hot. Then she turns sharply to the young man and Kinishi realizes that he must have been looking at her for a long time. Suddenly, the girl is right in front of the young man and says that he smells of spices. The young man realizes that this is the smell left over from yesterday's curry. The girl says that if a man has spices with him, she will buy them. Kinishi replies that he has them, but he doesn't sell them. He tries to explain what will happen if he starts spreading spices, but he is interrupted by a woman next door and says that everything is right. If the coalition notices him, then he will be in trouble. The girl leaves, upset. Kinishi mentally apologizes to her and thinks that he doesn't want the spice monopolists to set eyes on him. He is interrupted by a girl in a maid's uniform and asks a man to give her a hundred clothespins. Kinishi is very surprised and says that they will cost one silver. The girl replies that they will be used in the mansion, so they gave her money with them. Then the girl notices the jewelry. She asks if it's really a diamond. The young man explains that this is a polished flake, but he thinks that it is actually zirkin. As for the price, six square silver coins, that is, 30,000 yen. The girl says it's still not expensive. Kinishi says that if he likes the jewelry, he can put it aside for the girl, although few will be able to buy it. The girl agrees and then thinks about it. After a while, she leaves with a bag of clothespins. After a while, Kanishi thinks that he has thought enough for today. They even asked him to put the necklace aside. Suddenly, tall men in the form of animals approach him. They turned to him and asked if the man could sell them spices. Kinishi realized that these were the friends of that anthropomorphic cat. Kinishi says that won't do. If dangerous people have their eyes on him, then he will no longer be able to trade here. Suddenly, these evil-looking men knelt down and asked the man for mercy. Kinishi was surprised and told them that there was no need to bow, because it was somehow inconvenient. Local residents drew attention, who said that anthropomorphs should not put pressure on the young man because he also has his own life. Then Kanishi sighed. They gathered in a circle, and the young man began to whisper to them that he would not be able to sell them spices, but could treat them to a meal with spices outside the city. They asked if it was really possible. The man said it was only once. There is a river running by the road to the city, so he suggests that they eat together on the shore. Kanishi's neighbor heard them and said that she would also like to eat the man's food. The anthropomorph said that everything was fine, since they had agreed. Then the anthropomorphic man grabbed the woman and Kanishi and then ran with them, saying that there was not a minute to lose. Then they come to the riverbank. Kanishi takes out a table, cutlery and groceries. Kanishi rolls up his sleeves and says it's time for cooking. The girl asked if the young man really got everything out of nowhere with the help of an inventory. The men were surprised, as this is the first time they have seen such a thing. The man agreed. The woman says she will help the man. Kanishi thanks the woman and tells the woman to cut these vegetables as it suits her. He also says that all the ingredients are edible, so she doesn't have to worry. The woman was surprised by the color, and Kanishi said that the woman was holding a carrot. Then time passed. The atropomorph girl was stirring the broth. The men were drooling. Kanishi was frying vegetables in a frying pan. The young man said that fried vegetables and meat with curry seasoning along with rolls and soup. The men began to eat and asked why it was so delicious, because they had never eaten such a thing. A bun with soup is also an association. The woman said that at first she was doubtful after seeing unprecedented vegetables, but it's delicious. The man wished everyone a pleasant appetite. After such a meal, you still want to drink something stronger. The woman began to tell the men to be at least a little more modest. The man says that since they are having so much fun, he will give them hot drinks, but they must promise that they will not tell anyone about today. The man said that he does not drink strong drinks, so he will have juice. The woman told Kanishi that he spoils them too much. After a while, Kanishi said that they hadn't met yet. He gives his name. The men introduce themselves as Nayakero, Narmero and Nyanzi, and the girl's name is Mier. The woman says her name is Anama, so they spent a pleasant evening, and then they all ran to swim together. Anama and Kanishi stayed on the shore, so they continued to have fun. Then everyone went to bed. Suddenly Kanishi felt that someone was climbing under his blanket. Mier said she was so warm, and Kanishi said it was more warm for him. Then he turns his attention to Shangrel's store and thinks that he does not know how this panel is arranged. But even in the dark he can clearly see it. 
but the light from it does not illuminate the area. So, in reality, the panel does not exist. He also thinks not only about this panel, but also about where all things come from. The status does not indicate either the status or the level. The more he thinks about this ability, the more mysterious it becomes, but for today he thinks that's enough thinking. The next morning, the young man wakes up and yawns. He and Anama come to the market. The man thinks they made a little noise yesterday. Anama wishes the man a good morning and also indicates that the man looks sleepy. The man tells the woman that she drank a lot yesterday, and then asks how she feels. Anama replies that she is fine, and then asks how the young man feels. The man says he feels good too. The young man returned to the hotel this morning. Azalea turned to Kanishi and asked the man where he had been today. Kanishi replied that he had been drinking with anthropomorphs. Azalea said that since there was an opportunity to walk with anthropomorphic girls, he could have walked with her. The man replied that he was not interested in such girls. Azalea turned around and left. Kanishi thought that it looked like the girl was very angry. Moreover, she is not needed for his measured life, which he aspires to. Then he hears the voice of a girl who turns to Margaret and asks if the girl was talking about this store. Margaret replies to the mistress that it is him. Kinishi saw the maid who had recently bought a hundred clothespins from him. He saw a girl with expressive eyes and an intelligent look, straight golden hair, and in good clothes. She definitely looks like a girl from a rich family. Kinishi asked the maid if she had come to pick up the delayed goods. The maid girl agreed. She gives him the money, and the man gives her the jewelry. The maid thanks the man, and then approaches the mistress. The girl is surprised and asks if it is really a diamond. The maid says that according to the seller, this is ordinary glass. Kanishi says that it is ground glass, and then asks if there could be something wrong with this decoration. The girl asks if the man has any more jewelry and if he can show it. The man agrees and takes the jewelry out of the inventory. The girl is surprised that he has such a skill. Kanishi agrees and says that this is really an inventory, but he thinks that everything came straight from Shangrel. The girl thinks about it and says that she has one request for a man. Kanishi says he listens to the girl. The girl replies that her name is Primura and she is the eldest daughter of the head of the Maru Trading Company. Kanishi thinks about the Maru Trading Company, and then says that he is very pleased to meet the girl and gives his name. Primura apologizes for the surprise and asks the man if he could meet her father. Kanishi realizes that this is very unexpected, and then whispers to Anama and asks her if she knows anything about the Maru Trading Company. Anama replies that it is one of the leading trading firms in the city. The young man asks that the coalition, which often comes up in conversations, are not dangerous people included. Anama replies that Maru is only engaged in fair trade. Kanishi thinks that it doesn't seem like such a bad offer. If they are the presenters, then they can be said to be the face of this city. Creating a connection with them is not a bad idea. He asks the girl if she needs to go right now. The mayor says that today the father is in the palace, so it's better for them to come in during the day. The man replied that he understood. Suddenly, Primura bows and asks the man to forgive her for asking him to postpone his business. Kanishi realized that Primura was the daughter of the head of a large trading company, but she was very polite to him, a newcomer who could easily be blown away from this place. Judging by her, the father is probably a good person too. After a while, they return to the palace. The man gets into the carriage and says that he has never ridden in such a beautiful carriage before. The mayor says that the carriages of the aristocrats are even more beautiful. She says that as soon as she saw the clothespins purchased from the young man, she asked a familiar craftsman to make the same ones. However, it did not work out at all to establish production. To make a product with smoothly touching work surfaces, a high level of processing technology is required, as well as, for example, tweezers. The clothespins he sells are probably made using a machine with an integrated computer program. The same is true with a coil-shaped spring. He doesn't think that extrusion technology has been invented in this world, so they will have to forge each spring manually. It is because of this that it is problematic to make clothespins at home. At first glance, they seem simple, but high technology is needed to make them. The Primura said that their master said the same thing. Then she added that it seemed they had arrived. They enter a beautiful mansion and pass through a huge courtyard. After a while, the man was sitting on the couch and thinking that this was a class society. He notices the expensive items and thinks that he wants to sell them all on Shangri-La. His thoughts are interrupted by the Primura and told the man that his father is ready to meet with them. After a while, he meets with Primura's father. The man thanks Kanishi for coming to them. He introduces himself to Maru, and also says that he is the director of Maru's trading company. Kanishi says it's nice to meet you. He came at the request of his daughter. His name is Kanishi, and he hopes that they will not see each other for the last time. 
The man tells Kanishi that he is very polite and he is also glad to meet him. Then the Primera begins to whisper something in his father's ear. The man asks Kanishi if he really had inventory. The young man agrees and says that he is not very big. The man puts his finger up and says he has one too. Then suddenly a statuette appears on the table. Kanishi turned to Maru and said that he really had inventory too. Maru replied that, thanks to him, he was able to raise the company to such a high level. Kanishi says that this is commendable, because he used the inventory as a warehouse for vegetables. Maru replied that Kanishi was doing it for nothing. Kanishi then changed the subject and asked the man what, exactly, he had called him for. Maru and Primero were silent for a while. Maru smiled and asked, to put it bluntly, if Kanishi could supply them with goods in bulk. Kanishi replied that he understood. Judging by Maru's daughter, his goods, with the right choice of buyer, can be sold even more expensive. In that case, wouldn't it be better for them to buy goods from him at a cheap price and then sell them at an expensive price? Maru nodded and said that if he did that, it would be as soon as the man found out about it. Kanishi replies that he will definitely stop selling silver jewelry. Maru replied that competitors would surely come and offer him a better deal. This minute's benefit will obscure your eyes and you will not notice a good deal. For a merchant, this is the stupidest decision. The man says that he is ready to buy five times more expensive, and then asks Kanishi if he is against it. The man immediately agrees. Maru wanted to say that it was still difficult, and then asked if Kanishi was sure. Kanishi thinks that buying an item for two or three thousand yen and selling it for several tens of thousands is just fine for him. If everything works out, then by selling only two or three silver jewelry, he will be able to live happily, but he will still be engaged in trade. Meru holds out his hand to Kanishi and says that then they have a deal. Then they shake hands. Thus, by signing a contract for the wholesale sale of clothespins and jewelry, Kanishi concluded a deal with the Meru Trading Company. The wholesale price in the Meru Trading Company for silver jewelry ranges from 500,000 to 1 million yen. They also sell jewelry with zirconium-treated diamonds, flowed quartz. However, processing technologies are still quite low, so glass or zirconium are more popular than real gems. By selling a few silver items alone, he had benefited over a million yen. The total amount in the Shangri-La wallet has reached seven figures. With money, he will be able to lead a measured life. Kanishi thinks it's great. Then he points to the map and says that the base has been decided to be made in the forest. Residents of the city are wary of its dangerous place. Undoubtedly, he was attacked by a monster too, and they would probably think that he was crazy. But he's not going to go further than 200 meters, it shouldn't be too dangerous. He wants to lead a quiet and unhurried life, frozen food and fast food. He needs the usual food. In the future, he wants to use electrical appliances. It would be better if no one saw it. As soon as he finds a place, he will cut down the trees and free her. It will be necessary to build some kind of house. Then the man is surprised when he sees a log house in an online store where assembly is required. After a while, the young man was mowing the grass with a gasoline lawn mower, one piece for 30,000 yen. The man decided to build a house in the forest and begin to realize his quiet life in another world. He finally cleared the road. It is surrounded by tall grass, so he will be able to ride a bike. Then it remains to decompose the gravel. Gasoline for the lawn mower. It is more expensive than usual. But what can you do? Because fuel is not sold here. Then he thinks he'll get away with it. Then he decides to buy a chainsaw for 30,000 yen. The next thing he has to do is to provide a place for a log house. He makes a triangular incision and a larger one from the side where he wants to knock down the tree. Then you need to carefully drive a wedge. Then the young man realizes that it would be necessary to remove all the fallen logs. He thinks that he is wondering how big an item can fit into the inventory. It seems that the log does not fit in this form, and then thinks to divide the log by 10 meters. Then such a log is placed in the inventory. The young man understands that logs can be converted into firewood. If a 10 meter thing is placed, then most of the items will fit. Kanishi then looks around and tries to figure out that all that's left is to dig out those big stumps. You need to split it up with a chainsaw and dig it out piece by piece. Kanishi screams that it's too hard. He buys an excavator. The young man thinks it's time for bigger cars, so he calls for an excavator. I had to buy an excavator for 120,000 yen to finish the job. Although it has already been used, and the rust is showing, but the main thing for him is that now he will not get tired. He climbs into the cockpit and thinks about trying it out. The man starts the car and thinks that diesel is needed. Heavy machinery is all powered by diesel. He opens a Shangri-La store and searches for diesel fuel in the search, but there is none. He finds the auxiliary substance is sold, but the kerosene is there, a substance that converts kerosene into diesel fuel. 
Lighting kerosene is sold in the camping supplies department. Filtered kerosene, when burning, does not leave soot and does not smoke. Orange it is used in kerosene lamps. 1 liter for 1,800 yen. But there is no choice. Whale oil is even more expensive on the market. He wonders if it really works. Then he decides to try to use it on this one. He calls for a diesel electric generator. He often used a generator, but never a diesel one. It is made in a foreign country, so it cannot read the instructions. First, he will fill up the fuel and try to start it. Everything is working out. The man tried to turn on the light bulbs, and they say, but due to strong fluctuations in electrical voltage, it is not suitable for home use. He's also noisy. Now he will be able to use the excavator. He's going to the city tomorrow. A man notices dirt on his body. The man was thinking that he would like to take a bath in the bathroom, although you can also wash in the river. He comes to the hotel and wishes Azalea a good morning. The girl asks the man where he had been. The man says that he was preparing a place for a house in the forest. He decided to say goodbye one last time. Azalea was very surprised. No wonder Azalea is surprised. They have something like a taboo. It is forbidden to live in the forest. Azalea asked the young man if he was serious. Kanishi says that's for sure. A flashlight with infrared radiation and an audible alarm. At least he took some measures. They just ate it in the forest. The man says that he is rather more worried about insects. Azalea told the man that maybe he should buy a magic insect stone. Odorless and mosquitoes will not fly up. Kanishi asked about the magic stone and asked where it was for sale. Azalea said it was for sale at a hardware store near the market. Suddenly, the man was asked what he was looking for. An elderly man approached him and said that he had not seen Kanishi before. Kanishi said that he had recently opened a shop in the market, so he and the man were colleagues. The man said that he could give a good sum for an interesting foreign thing. Kanishi asks if the man could sell a magic insect stone. He will be happy if he makes a discount for them, and then hands out the oranges. The man said that he had never seen these fruits. The magic stone builds two silver coins, but it will make a discount for Kanishi. Kanishi realizes that it will cost about 100,000 yen. He thanks the merchant. So, the man was able to buy cheaper from his grandfather from the hardware store. Kanishi agreed and thanked him. Anama said that he has good connections in this city. He's like a walking encyclopedia. By making friends with him, he will only get more. Kanishi then sees a newspaper in the woman's hands and asks about those depicted in the photo. Anama says that there is not much talk about them here, but 60 kilometers away, in the mountains, a terrible group of steppe is raging. Kanishi asks if they are bandits. Anama agrees and says that this is a happy group of bandits. They spend the night in the ruins of an old castle and devastate nearby villages and towns. Kanishi then puts things in his inventory. Anama asks the man if he is closing up. The man agrees and says that although it was very interesting for him to hear about bandits, he looks at the money and realizes that the profit is 20,000 yen and a penny. Due to the fact that the shops of the Meru Trading Company began to sell clothespins, they no longer buy so much from him. The next day, the man calls for an excavator. Today is the day he will be working with an excavator. That's what he understands about power. However, more than that, driving a big car is so exciting. He's even ready to dig up everything in the area. He needs to carefully prepare the place for the house in order to properly mark the building. It is necessary to level the ground. However, after buying such an expensive thing as an excavator, the balance of the wallet began to crack at the seams. In this case, you need to replenish it somehow. After a while, he comes to the Meru Palace. Primura greets Kanishi and says that they were waiting for him. The girl says that a lot of customers want to buy men's goods. Kanishi said that he would also be happy to provide more, however, they are valuable, so it is quite difficult to get them. He apologizes. Primura says she understands that such good things are not so easy to get. After a while, they come to Meru's office. The man lays out the goods of their inventory on the table. For example, sugar in a funeral urn and necklaces with a stone, bracelets and so on. The Primura was surprised and said that one bracelet here is just beautiful. He asked his father to buy it. Meru said there was nothing he could do about the girl. If the girl takes everything, then the buyers will have nothing left. Then the man succumbs to his daughter's charms and asks Kanishi how much this bracelet costs. The man realizes that Meru seems weak before his daughter's requests. Kanishi says that it is golden in color, but only clad. The girl asks again and says that, that is, a layer of gold was applied to it with mercury. Kanishi replies that the girl is good at it. Actually, it's not mercury, but electric current. The girl asks why it is so complicated and the master is a rather specific person. Kanishi then asks about sugar. Nero says that sugar and salt are controlled by the state, so he will not be able to buy it. 
Kanishi thought that, as he understood, sugar is a valuable commodity, so he bought it, but did not know that such an obstacle would stand in front of him. On Shangrel, one kilogram costs 200 yen, and he thought there would be a good profit. Meru says that nevertheless, cameo jewelry is very popular among the nobility. He asks Kanishi to show him more jewelry, and he agrees. After a while, the amount he received from the deal with the Meru company was 15 gold coins, that is, 3 million yen. With them, he will buy a house made of logs and stop living in a tent. He buys a house for 1,700,000 yen. The next moment, a pile of planks appears right behind Kanishi. The man turns around and is very surprised. He doesn't understand what this whole mountain is and why everything is sorted out. He goes into Shangri-La's store to see what's wrong. A man sees his house made of logs, which requires assembly. Kanishi screams and realizes that everything is right and the house will have to be built by himself. Now it's clear to him why the house is so cheap. He himself thought that its price was too small for such a good house, but what should he do with all this mountain now? Of course, he was looking for a lot of information, but he definitely couldn't handle the construction of the rafters himself. Then the man sits and sighs. Kanishi remembers that he has an excavator. He picks up the instructions and realizes that the house is built on thin boards attached to each other, and there are no beams and pillars. Kanishi realizes that he has already gone too far. He needs to bring the matter to an end. Or over, you can't return the money now, then he sees a falling glass that has broken. Finally, he started building a house, opening my shop in between. One week passed like that, then another week passed, and eventually it took a whole month to build your house for the first time in your life. However, there is nothing inside yet, the house is empty, but he can arrange it the way he wants. He can put in a sink and a whole kitchen. Then Kanishi remembers about the light. He's using a gasoline lamp now, but what about electricity? That diesel generator can be replaced with a quieter one but you still have to spend money on gasoline and lighting kerosene. I wonder how many solar panels will be enough to live in the forest. He has a lot of things to do. Another month passed and finally Kanish's house was ready. The man says he thinks it looks good. He made the fence himself and painted it with a protective compound bought on Shangri-La so that it would not rot. The marigolds planted around ward off insects, although he has a magic insect stone, but it seems that the flowers do not do a bad job of protecting the city. Near the house, he plowed a small vegetable garden and put a toilet nearby. At first glance, it does not differ much from the old world. And, of course, he will use all the waste as fertilizer. He put a sink with a kitchen in the corner of the room, but since he has inventory, he did not make a warehouse. The problem with electricity was solved by the arrangement of 20 solar panels, each worth 10,000 yen. And in addition, he bought a battery that can be recharged. This way he can directly connect the panels to it and charge it. And the man also put a kidney in a small building. He built a bathhouse. Kinishi thought that he had inadvertently said just like an uncle, but he was already so old that he could. Anyway, what a nice bath. He built a bathtub in a steel barrel. A steel tub barrel costs 20,000 yen and he took 10 plastic cans. He collects water from the river, puts it in his inventory and rode a mountain bike with the breeze. This is the first bath that a young man takes after arriving in this world, and even among the trees. This is the very basis for a measured life. Not everyone will be able to repeat it, and yet he did not try in vain. Having become the master of his own castle, from that day on he begins his quiet life. At this time, someone is watching the man from the bushes. It's been a month since Kanishi started living in his house. He was already getting used to the dark forest, so he decided to explore it. He bought a digital objective SLR camera for 23,000 yen. It's just his hobby and it doesn't make much sense, but she likes how the photo album is filled with beautiful flowers and plants of this world. Then he notices the flower and thinks it is very beautiful. Suddenly, a man notices a huge beast right under the trunk of a tree. He is surprised that this animal is black, hot. If you look closely, it is a cat. Not as small and cute as a house. He thinks it's a wild purebred spotted cat. He seems to be breathing, but he looks very weakened. The man sees a broken arrow sticking out of the beast's body, so he wanted to help him. He approaches the beast, but it suddenly starts hissing at him. Suddenly, the beast feels pain and lies down, pressed to the ground. Kanishi continues to stare at him. Then he takes out a pillow secured with a rope from the inventory, as well as neck protection for motorcyclists, and says that he is ready for bites. To be honest, he is very scared, but it is also wrong to leave the beast like that. He pulls out a piece of an arrow with his hand, and the beast begins to scream. Then he lies back down and the man pulls the arrow out of the beast's body. Kinishi thought that the beast was so exhausted that it did not resist at all and looked as if it had already given up. He takes a cloth and begins to wipe the wound, 
and then realizes that Pus has already begun to appear. Kanishi doesn't know what to do, and he thinks that first he needs to rinse the wound with saline and disinfect it around. He goes to an online store and buys antifungal ointment there. The man applies the purchased ointment, which seems to be based on a medicine against dermatitis, and gives the beast painkillers. Finally, the treatment was completed. Kanishi wonders if he did everything right and if it's really enough. He has no confidence at all. He cannot leave this animal in the forest, and it is impossible to place animals in the inventory. Then he buys a large cart for 9,000 yen and decides to carry the beast to the street. At the expense, he decides to lift this beast, but realizes that the beast is very heavy and definitely weighs more than 30 kilograms. The man carried the beast home, but it did not even move. He thinks that there is really no way to save him. He understands that there is probably no veterinarian in this world. Maybe there is something like healing magic, but in any case, he'd better ask tomorrow because there are magic stones here after all. After a while, Anama laughed because the young man is quite strange since he brought a forest cat to his house. She sighs and adds that the man is definitely crazy. The man apologizes to the girl. The girl from the hardware store also replied the same way. He said that the young man was probably joking when he said that he wanted to use healing magic on the beast. This big cat is called a forest cat and its skin costs a lot of money. He also said it was better to take it to the guild but that wouldn't do. Suddenly, Mier appeared, who said that she smelled like a forest cat and she wanted to look at him. The man was surprised. After a while, they walked along the path. The man said that, it turns out, anthropomorphs protect forest cats. Mier agreed and said that they consider them messengers of God. Kanishi thinks that for a simple person he is only an expensive material, but for an anthropomorph he is a messenger of God. In other words, he is an angel. So the cat was shot by someone other than the beastmen. Nier said that dog people are different. They definitely wanted to kill the forest cat. They also worship a magical wolf. Kanishi remembered the magical wolves he had met at the very beginning of the journey. Kanishi asks if they, the cat people, are hunting a magical wolf. The girl agreed, and then said that the man had saved the forest cat, so now he is one of them. The man thought that he did not want to answer about this yet, and he saved him by accident. Nier is surprised and tells Kanishi that this house is very beautiful. The girl asked if he really built a house in the forest right away. Kanishi says he had to work hard. At that moment, the cat was lying on his bed. Kanishi says he sees that the cat has eaten a little. He hopes that his appetite will return quickly. Nier said he hurt his hip and he's so poor. The man said that now he needed to apply the ointment again. Then he notices that the cat starts licking his wound. The man tells him not to lick this wound. Kanishi buys a protective collar for 3,000 yen and tells the cat that it's all for him, so he asks the cat to understand him. Nier asked Kanishi if he was a veterinarian. The man replied in the negative, and then said that he thought he could treat the wound, and he put on the collar so that the cat would not lick the wound. Nier says that it's good that Kanishi is a good person, because someone else would definitely take this cat to the guild. She's worried about the forest cat, so she's staying here. The man asks if this is really the case. He says there is only one cat, but Mier says they can sleep on one. Kanishi doesn't understand if all anthropomorphic girls are like that. Mier says that the one who saved the forest cat cannot be a bad person. Kanishi repeated Mier's words that he could not be a bad person, even though he did not fully understand the values of this world. Then Kanishi took care of the forest cat, and Mier was able to catch a bird for dinner. Kanishi put on the grill and then fried the bird on it. Mier lit up with the desire to eat it all. Then the man gives the forest cat a bowl of delicious smelling food. Mier and Kanishi were happy that the forest cat liked the dish. After a while, Mier left, and Kanishi decided to take up gardening. Kanishi bought an electric cultivator for 16800 yen. He understands that the car is working well and he just needs to hold on. The man quickly plowed everything in 30 minutes. If he swung a hoe, his whole body would definitely hurt the next day. The man does not understand what to plant. Usually people plant tomatoes, eggplants and potatoes. To begin with, he will try to plant only tomatoes. He can buy vegetables on Shangri-La and this idea seems useless, but a measured life includes growing vegetables, even though he uses cunning. By the way, it is also quite inconvenient to carry water from the river in cans every time. He is wondering if it is possible to dig a well in the forest. You only need to dig a hole with an earth drill to run a hose. He doesn't need a big well. There are quite large trees growing here. There should definitely be a lot of water under them. The next morning, the man wakes up and sees some kind of shadow on the ceiling, namely something black. Suddenly, something jumps right onto the young man and he starts coughing. That someone was a black cat. Kanishi was delighted with the healthy appearance of the forest cat. The man says that since the cat was able to climb so high, 
he must have already gotten stronger. He says he's going to take off his protective collar now. Then the cat jumps off the bed and starts banging on the door. Kanishi gets up and opens the door, and then asks the cat if he's really leaving already. The forest cat started to turn around and then walks away. Kanishi thinks that although he also limps a little, but you don't have to worry about him. He smiles and thinks that he has done everything in his power. He hopes that this cat will be alright. A couple of days later, he stopped appearing on the market and decided to work on the well. And finally, after a while, he held the water. He says that he pumped the water out of the well, passed it through a PVC pipe and poured it directly into the tub barrel. He thinks he's pretty good. Nevertheless, doing something with his own hands is very fun and he is doing well. He got carried away and it was already dark, so he decides to heat up the bath and plunge into it with his head. Then the man lights the stove. Suddenly, someone calls his name, and he gets very scared. The man turns around and sees the Primura there. The girl climbed over the fence. Kanishi asked her what she was doing here. The girl replied that she was worried, because he had not opened his shop for a long time. But the cat girl pointed out where the man lived. Kanishi asked the girl if she had really come unguarded and what would have happened if she had been attacked by monsters. The girl said that Kanishi lives here, so you don't have to be afraid. She also heard that a man had saved an injured forest cat. Then the girl pointed to the excavator and asked him what kind of huge piece of steel it was. The man realized that he had left an excavator on the street. The man said absolutely seriously that he had summoned this creature himself, so he was his faithful assistant. The Primura was surprised and asked the man if he had really summoned him and if it could be that he could use magic. Kanishi agrees. Then he says that he would like to ask the girl not to tell anyone about this. Primura agrees and said that she knew that the young man was an unusual person, but one of his secrets had just been revealed. Kanishi thought that it seemed as if he had shown his weakness, but he thought that from the beginning he might not worry, especially if the royal nobility finds out about it. They'll just use it and throw it away. This is not a joke. They wouldn't want this to happen to a trading company either. Meru doesn't want to lose a partner. Going only takes and there is no guarantee that there will be something in return. Just as he thought. Then the man tells the mayor that the city gates are already closed. The Primura said that the man was absolutely right. The man asked if the girl was really going to stop here. Primura asks Kanishi if he really wants her to spend the night outside. The man said he only had one bed. The Primura replied that it was okay. For long business trips for purchases, sleeping in the same place as men is quite normal. Kinishi thought that the girl was not a blunder. He sees that Primura really wants to stay here, and he can't kick her out. Then the Primura notices the barrel and asks what it is. The man replies that it is a bathtub. The Primura is very surprised. She says that she definitely has to try it. The girl starts taking a bath, and then apologizes to Kanishi and asks if he is there. The man is sitting behind the wall and says that he is here. He thinks that he is only here because the girl is afraid to sit alone. She's scared, so the man decided to sit around the corner. He thinks she's just like a little girl who can't go to the bathroom at night. Then the Primura calls the man again. She tells him that she is in the bathtub, so she asks if the man could come in. Kanishi asks the girl if she's okay with it. Primura agrees. Kanishi thinks that since she says that he can enter, then he can. He is no longer of an age to strain himself at the sight of a naked girl. He comes in and asks how her water is. The girl replies that the water is just fine and she didn't think she could take a bath so easily. To make a bath like the nobles, you need to make a room out of stone, install a boiler and run a water pipe. At least a few tens of millions are needed. Kinishi says that if he embarrasses a girl, then he can leave. The girl asks the man to stay. Kinishi sighs and replies that if the girl is scared, then she could come at another time or something. The girl said that you should not miss a chance in trading, because it may never happen again. Kanishi asked what would happen if he turned out to be a bad person. The girl replied that the one who helped the anthropomorph and saved the forest cat could not be a bad person. Another, seeing a wounded cat, would finish it off and take it to the guild. Then she said it was time to go out. The man handed her the clothes and told the girl that they were a robe and a belt, so she should not take them off until the sweat was gone. The girl puts on a bathrobe and says that it is incredibly soft, and then asked if it could be that it is also not for sale. The man replies that he was going to sell, but not much. Then he gives Primura a drink. She says it's so sweet and delicious and with a little sourness. She asks if it could be milk. The man agrees and says it's milk with fruit juice. Primura says that with so many goods in all of Dahlia, a man will become the richest merchant in the whole country. Kinishi replies that he doesn't want to become one. This profit is enough for him to live a quiet life with delicious food. Then he invites the girl to show her his hobby. He shows her the album. 
Primura asks if Kanishi really painted it. The man agrees and says that she only needs money for crafts and drawing. No more is needed. Primura says that this is the same forest cat. Maybe it's better for a man to become an artist at the palace. Kanishi tells the girl not to flatter him, and then asks her if she wants him to draw her. The girl agrees. Then she takes a pose, and Kanishi begins to draw her. After a while, he shows her the drawing. Primura is very happy and asks if she can pick him up. Kanishi agrees. The Primura clutched the portrait to her chest. Kanishi then bought a metal bed for the Primura. He couldn't sleep, so he looked at his information windows. He understands that there is one, but quite a big problem in Shangri-La. He thinks about what if he transfers too much money to the site. If there are no restrictions on the amount of money to pay, then the site will become exactly a black hole that sucks up money. As long as you have money, you can buy anything you want. And when the royal family gets access to it, there will definitely be deals with billions and tens of billions of yen. However, the money sent to the black hole is not returned. Soon the treasury of the state will be empty, and then the country will be overtaken by economic collapse. And he will be accused of destroying the state, or he will be constantly on the run, destroying countries one by one. Therefore, he can dispose of the amount, approximately like a simple person, or try to sell on Shangri-La something that is worthless in this world. If there was a map, this problem would be solved in an instant. He understands that he will need to come up with some way to solve this problem. The next morning, Kanishi and Primura decided to go to the Meru Trading Company. He left the daughter of his trading partner for the night, so he needs to at least explain himself. He recalls all the episodes related to the Primura and says that he will definitely be angry. After a while, they arrive at the girl's house. They are met by Meru right at the gates of the mansion. He starts to get angry and asks the Primura where she was, because she didn't even tell him anything. The girl said that she was outside the walls of the city and could not return home, so she spent the night at Kanisha's house. She was outside the walls of the city and could not return home, so she spent the night at Kanisha's house. Kanishi awkwardly said that he couldn't leave Meru's daughter on the street, so he had to let her into the house. Meru replied that, in that case, he apologized for the inconvenience. Kanishi thought that the man would get angry or moralize. But apparently he is not worried about the fact that he and the girl have a big age difference or this trust in him. At that moment, Meru was wondering who his daughter was like. The Primura turned to her father and said that wasn't it obvious. Once he finds out about a good deal, neither the battlefield nor the endlessly flying arrows, nor the forest full of monsters, have ever stopped him. Kanishi thinks that Meru is probably puzzled by the wayward Primura. No one wants his daughter to get into trouble, even he thinks so. The girl added that she took advantage of the opportunity and was able to buy new goods. The man said that his daughter makes him worry. After a while, Kanishi pulls out a cloth. Mero said that he had not seen such a cloth yet and it could be used when wiping the body after bathing. And this is put on after taking a bath. Kanishi says it absorbs moisture well and is pleasant. Then he shows a woman's outfit and says that he also has this. Mero was very surprised and Primura watched admiringly. He said that this could melt even the coldest heart, if a girl appears in it in front of a man she likes. At that moment, he turned his attention to Meru, who told the girl that she was not ashamed. Kanishi began to put away the goods and apologize for going too far. Suddenly, a door noise was heard. Kanishi saw a maid with books and said that after all, a large company has a large amount of accounting. Mero replied that the rules for compiling this accounting had recently been updated, and now he was rewriting everything. Kanishi asked what the rules were. Mero replied that this was a double entry that had recently been invented in the empire. Kanishi asked about the double entry. Meru asked if the young man knew about it. Kanishi replies that he only heard about it. According to Meru, somewhere on the outskirts of the empire, in a trading city, the head of the merchant guild came up with this method of accounting, and it quickly became popular throughout the empire. They want to appoint the head of the guild as minister of commerce for such services. However, this is a double entry. The Primura told her father that today was not the day of that experiment. Meru replied that the master had just said that everything was ready and after lunch they could start experiments. Primura asks, in that case, if the master can also take a look at what Kanishi has. Meru asked if it was really outside. The Primura agreed and said that it was quite large. Kanishi thinks that the Primura is really talking about a tub barrel. The girl asks the young man if he is against it. Kanishi replies that he doesn't mind. They agree that he will arrive after lunch and he has time before lunch. He decides to try to register for the Adventurer's Guild in the future. After a while, they come to the Adventurer's Guild. The receptionist asks if the man really wants to join the Adventurer's Guild. The entry fee is one silver coin. 
If he is a member of another guild, he must provide a certificate. Kinishi hands over a certificate from the merchant guild. Then the receptionist girl announces that registration is over. They can get acquainted with the assignments on that bulletin board, and he can also apply for special tasks in any window. Kinishi thanks the girl. He's thinking about what? Apparently, the merchant guild's ID card works everywhere. At the same time, he will inspect the bulletin board. He notices a task to collect rare herbs and search for lost things. A person has also disappeared, and above there are instructions to search for criminals. Then he notices a poster with the bandit group Step, which he recently heard about. There are 50 of them in total. The guild gives money for the capture. If you destroy them, you can get a good amount. He thinks that it's time to return to the palace, because this does not apply to him. After a while, he comes to the house of Meru and Primura and is very surprised when he sees a hand-held water pump. Meru asks Kanishi if the man really already knew about him. The man persists and says that the water goes up from the well by raising and lowering the lever. Meru says that the man is right and adds that he is aware of everything, as always. It has recently spread throughout the empire. They immediately bought it and asked the master to make it. Kinishi thinks that this is a world without copyright. But still, this water pump, like the double entry, is too thoughtful for randomness. Is there really someone else who came from another world? This is the man who will become the Minister of Commerce. At this time, the Primera shouted to her father and said that the water was running. Mero thought that this was great and that it needed to be put into production as soon as possible. As Kanishi thought, after the pump, the idea of a tub barrel did not bring them such enthusiasm. However, he felt a little offended, so he decided to suggest something else. It shows an image of a bicycle. The Primura is very happy. Primura starts laughing and asks what it is. Kanishi says that you need to push off the ground with your feet and drive. The girl shows an image of Meru and asks her father to look at it. Suddenly, Meru starts laughing and says he's never seen anything like it. Primura said that Kanishi has an excellent sense of humor. Kanishi thought that they probably thought it was funny. In any business, the initiator is most often ridiculed. If you tell them that you can fly through the sky, then they will definitely die laughing. The young man says that it is easier and less tiring to move around than just running. Mero replies that it seems like it's easier to ride than to run. If there is time, they will try to make it. Kanishi thinks about Meru's last sentence and thinks that Primura is still laughing and most likely won't be able to make it. A month passed and Kanishi noticed one carefree bike in the city. And, as he understood it, the Mero company began to sell it. Although he initially laughed at the painted bike, after a few days Meru realized its usefulness. So he decided to make a prototype and showed everyone his new product, rolling it around the city. Kanishi thinks that, after all, he is an excellent trader. He immediately gets down to business as soon as he sees a good idea. There were two bicycles, then three, and he began to see them sometimes. They were used in the government, and I work as a kind of messenger. Therefore, as the one who proposed the original idea, he received five gold coins. Of course, this is less than the patent fee in the last world, but even the fact that they paid for the idea is already pleasing. Mero was praised for inventing the bicycle, and the landowner rewarded him. He was allowed to have a surname. Of course, the fact that it was Kanisha's idea remains a secret. A few more months passed, and bicycles began to ride around the city more and more often. They called them Dizarin, but his measured life did not change. The grandfather from the hardware store sold him useful things, and the walk through the forest is also going according to plan. Vegetables grow well in the garden. The meat is brought by a forest cat and anthropomorphs, and while the guild buys carcasses, he can fully live on. For a while there were rumors in the market about Kanishi, a rather unusual man. But he rarely opened a shop, so they soon stopped talking. Went bankrupt, died, moved and so on, they came up with it themselves, but let them do it. He had already settled into a new world, so he was making fewer and fewer deals with the Maru company. Although I heard that the nobility continues to make orders. He began to go there less, but instead, the Primura began to go to him. The girl was eating a snack and said that they were so crunchy and had such a pleasant aroma. Kanishi said it was an appetizer, thinly sliced potatoes fried in oil. Primura began to visit him sometimes. She had heard that there was a similar dish in the empire, fried meat in oil called Kara Age. The young man was surprised by this. Then the mayor asked if Kanishi was sorry, because they were able to get a surname only thanks to the young man. Kanishi replied that it was okay. As he said earlier, he has enough money to feed himself. On the contrary, he would like to disclose his name. The Primura replied that they had laughed at Dizarin at first. Kanishi told the girl not to worry about it. Primura said that she first realized how comfortable it was as soon as she tried it out. Kanishi wondered if, nevertheless, Primura was going to stay the night again. 
After a while, Kanishi said that it was already night, so it was time to go to bed, because the girl still decided to stay. He tells the girl that he is going to get a nightgown. The Primura is embarrassed and says that if possible, could the man get what he recently showed that is translucent? Kanishi told the girl that if she bought such a thing, her father would be angry. Primura said that everything was fine, because she was no longer small. Kanishi asked the girl if she had someone she wanted to attract. The mayor's office gave a positive response and said that she wants to do it right now. Kanishi was surprised. Then he saw the girl's confused face. Kanishi told the girl to sit right next to him. The girl replied that she was sitting there. Kanishi said that young girls should take more care of themselves. You can't get attached to a guy like him. Primura told Kanishi that he was a wonderful person. Kanishi says it's unfortunate. Girls like Primura are not in great demand among the nobility. The mayor agreed and said that offers were being received, but the merchant's daughter could not become the first wife. They saw in him only a kept woman. The man asks what about that knight who often comes to his shop. The Primura asks if the man is really talking about a knight from the Nospal family. Kanishi asks what Meru would say if that happened. Primura replies that he doesn't mind. Kanishi thought that his father should have done this, because he probably didn't agree either. Kanishi apologizes and says that he would like to omit the topic, because it is too much responsibility, so he asks the girl to accept the refusal. The Primura was upset and asked the man to just let her at least sleep on the same bed. Just to sleep. After a while, they lie down together, and Primura immediately falls asleep. Kanishi was thinking at that moment why this girl liked an uncle like him. The next morning they said goodbye. Kanishi decided to take care of the garden today and remove the weeds. Suddenly, a voice interrupted him. A young man in armor came up to him and asked Kanishi if he was the same salesman in the store. Kanishi recognized this young man and said that he did not think he would meet him in such a place. The young man replied that he had been informed that a suspicious man lived in the forest, so he came to check. It turned out to be Kanishi. He asked how he managed to build a house here. Kanishi replies that it wasn't easy. The young man asks him what it is there, and then points to something black. Kanishi realizes that his solar panels are attracting attention. Kanishi says it has to do with magic, so he apologizes. The young man asks if he is really a magician. Kanishi said that he would like to ask the young man not to disclose this. The young man said that if others found out that Kanishi had strong magical abilities, it would be a bit problematic. The young man says that in this case, if it works out, can Kanishi fulfill one of the young man's wishes? After a while, the young man receives some fine ingots of steel. The surface glistened as if they had been sliced with a knife. Kanishi realized that the man was no longer pleased with the quality of the metal, but with the exact rectangular shape. The man says that he knows that the young man uses a long sword, but he does not have them, so he suggests that he take a bar of steel and ask his best blacksmith to forge a sword. The young man says he agrees. Kanishi then offers a strong drink as well. The young man says that you can't just leave after such a treat, so he asks what the man wanted to hear about. Kanishi says the man figured him out. He asked about the state of the country's diplomatic relations. The young man replies that the merchant is still interested in learning about other countries. Kanishi says that with the approach of war, what can be bought or sold is still changing. The young man says that he needs to think about it. Minor skirmishes with neighbors continue on the border, but he thinks there will be no war until internal problems are resolved. Kanishi asks about the problems in the empire. The young man replies that the empress and her first daughter are now fighting for power. Kanishi asks that the empress and the heiress are, after all, mother and daughter. The young man replies that it is. However, she wanted her beloved second daughter to inherit her title and tried to poison her first daughter, but she failed. And then their feud had just begun. Kanishi was surprised that mother and daughter were trying to kill each other. Kanishi asks how long it will take. The young man replies that he doesn't think so. The first princess subdued one strong magician with special magical power, so the daughter got into the hands of forces superior to her mother. Kanishi is thinking about a special magical power that is different from the usual one. It does not require anything in return, and can use infinitely much. So Shangri-La can also be considered a special magic. The young man tries to remember the name of this magic and says that it is yellow. Kanishi asked if they really called it mayonnaise. The young man agrees. Kanishi is very surprised and asks if it was really possible. The young man says that that magician is still able to cause a huge wave of oil. There is a legend that he poured oil on all the monsters and burned them to the ground. Kanishi initially thought that mayonnaise was just a joke, but with a large amount, it turns out that it can be used as a weapon. He's definitely the one who came from another world. The full name of this empire is the Empire of the Young Maiden. According to the knight, when the empress sits on the throne, there is a tradition where she, using the treasure of the gods, 
takes the form of a girl and rules the empire. Kanishi thinks it's very childish. And yet, I don't want a war at all. The knight just came to check that the man in the forest was not one of the bandits. Then let the knight inform others that there was a strange man in the forest. It had been a month since he had seen off the Primura and there had been no news from them for a long time. But later he found out that the Meru Trading Company had gone shopping in a caravan. They were supposed to be back today. Maybe something unusual has been brought, so he decides to take a look. A man makes his way into the crowd and thinks about what happened. Suddenly, he hears a familiar voice begging for help. Meru asked to save his daughter and said he would pay. The man was crying very hard. Suddenly Kanishi ran up to him and asked what happened. Meru said that their caravan was attacked by bandits, and when they were completely robbed, Primura did not have time to escape. Kanishi was very surprised. Meru's other colleagues said the man tried to come back, but they dragged him away and they don't know if the others are alive. They don't know how far the bandits from Step can go. Meru falls to his knees and asks someone to save his daughter. He says he can give you as much money as anyone wants. Others began to whisper that the step was destroying villages to the ground. The head of that gang of bandits of more than 50 people that was on the board of criminals. Probably, there is no way to save the Primura. Kanishi thought about Primura at one point and told Meru that he would definitely figure it out. Everyone was very surprised. Kanishi thinks it looks like madness, even though it is. He has never led an army, he is completely new to this. Surely everyone is thinking about what he can do. Kanishi thinks that if he doesn't do something now, he will definitely regret it. Moreover, they have Shangri-La. The man tells Meru that he needs money to prepare. He will return them to him later. The man immediately takes out a bag and says that, in this case, the man can use this money. For the sake of his daughter, he is ready to give any amount. Kanishi thanks the man. The amount in the account was 50 gold coins. The bandit's base is 30 leagues away, that is, about 50 kilometers. It takes strong legs to get to the base. He thinks about horses, and then says that he will just find the right transport on Chingrilla and it doesn't matter anymore. If you take a truck capable of driving over rough terrain and with a capacity of 20 to 30 people, then you need a truck. The man shouts to everyone that he is now using summoning magic. Something big is coming up, so everyone needs to disperse. Everyone is surprised that a man will use summoning magic and he is probably a magician. Meru turned to Kanishi and asked what he was going to do. Kanishi buys a truck and says that he is going to summon a diesel-powered truck for 2,400,000 yen. Everyone was very surprised and scared that something big had appeared. Kanishi said that everything is fine and he only listens to a man. This is a car that drives without horses. Everyone was surprised that she was really riding without a horse. It's like magic. Kanishi didn't think he would drive a truck in another world. It's good that he has a Category C driver's license. On it, he will take those who are ready to fight to the bandit's base. He will provide weapons and shields. They will be able to get a large amount of money for the head of the step. Kanishi fell silent, but suddenly Mir turned to him and asked the man what kind of weapon he would give her. Kanishi was surprised that Mir came to him. After all, the girl seemed to say that she was good at archery. He buys her a block onion. The girl is surprised and asks what it is, because she has never seen such a cool bow. Kanishi says that he is very strong, but it takes time to pull the bowstring, so the girl will not be able to shoot in a row. Mir replies that she understood. Suddenly, Nayakero, Narmero, and Nyanzi approach Kanishi. The men ask the hero if they will get any weapons. Kanishi gives them a saber for 15,000 yen, a battle axe for 36,000 yen and a crossbow for 55,000 yen. The men were very happy, because it is much better than the crossbows of the Imperial Army. Due to the fact that the blade is thin, it seems soft, but at the same time it does not bend much. Kanishi realized that whoever gets hit by them is in trouble. The men told Kanishi that they would go with him, because they just wanted to earn money, so they asked the man to take them with him. Suddenly someone says that, in that case, he is with them too. Kanishi turned around and saw a familiar knight. The beastman said that with a knight, they would be able to be more confident in their abilities. The young man says that by the way, finally his wolf's fang is ready. Kanishi asked the knight about the wolf's fang. The young man took out his new sword and said that, of course, this was the name of his sword. The blacksmith forged it from the steel that Kanishi had recently provided him with. Hunting a step will be a great chance to try it out. He let it soak in the blood of those guilty of evil deeds. Kanishi thought that the man was also a little crazy. Suddenly, the grandfather from the hardware store appears and says that he will not stay away either. Kanishi asked if he was going to beat everyone up too. The man replies that he was actually an adventurer. He then demonstrates his abilities and magic. Kanishi says that grandpa turns out to be a magician. The man replies that he has long ceased to be one, 
but he thinks that he will come in handy in battle. Suddenly, Anama called them and asked how they dared not invite her with them. Kanishi asked the woman who had already climbed into the truck what she was saying, because they were going to fight. The woman replied that fighting was fighting, but the group would not starve. She will certainly be able to cook food, but at any danger she will run. Thus, eight adventurers gathered. Considering that there are 50 evil bandits, they are far from in a winning position. He also gave out more with a crossbow and a machete. However, they should not attack them head on. You can, for example, at night, suddenly. Then maybe they have a chance. Then they come to the Adventurer's Guild. The receptionist girl with shaking hands accepts a statement on the destruction of the Step Gang. There is no adventure rank in this world, so you can take any assignment. If everything works out, the man will receive money from the Guild, the Meru Company and from the state. It's going to be a pretty big sum, but that's only if he comes back alive. Then the man leaves the Guild and meets Meru there. The man told Kanishi that he guessed that the man was hiding something. However, he did not know that he possessed such magic. Kanishi turns to Meru and says that he has a request for a man. Meru asks the man how he can help. Then Meru starts glowing and asks, says he can take as much as he wants. Kanishi, although he was looking for armor or chain mail on Shangrel, but there was nothing there that was necessary for an adventurer. Meru's company paid for all this, so they bought for everyone, including Kanishi. He took the lightest leather armor for himself. Then he turns to one of the beastmen who was holding the shield and said that he would give him a better shield, so there was no need to buy it. The man asked if Kanishi's shield was really the same as a stiff saber with some kind of magical effect. Kanishi agreed and said that he couldn't show here, so he would see them leave the city. He will also cook the food, so the warriors don't have to worry. Everything is in the inventory, so they will eat delicious food. At that moment, the young warrior said that he was all in anticipation. Mr. Kanish's dishes are simply delicious, and the camping food is always tasteless. With a delicious lunch, your mood will improve. After a while, Kanishi gets behind the wheel and says it's time to leave. Fifteen adventurers and one woman got into a four-ton truck with weapons and armor. After lunch, they were escorted by other people, and they all headed to the base. Among the mourners were those who pointed at them and laughed because only 15 people would not be able to defeat the group. However, every man has a moment when he needs to go, no matter what. They left Dahlia to rescue the Primera from the hands of bandits. They set up their base in an abandoned castle 50 kilometers away. There are 50 of them, and they say they don't stand on ceremony with anyone. Several people of their caravan have already been killed. It is unknown what they were able to do with the Primura. Kanishi knows better than to think about it. Now we need to figure out how to save her. Anama told the man that she was, however, very surprised. She didn't think it was possible to accelerate so much without horses. Magic is not a joke. It doesn't shake much, and if you drive so fast in a cart, you can easily crash. Kanishi realizes that Anama believes it's all magic, but it's even better this way. Nier replies that they will crash on the way to the camp. After a while, the whole squad stopped for a snack. Everyone was delighted with how delicious it was. Although the soup is red, it is a vegetable soup with a lot of rabbit meat in it. Kanishi said that since the man understood so immediately, it means that his taste is so specific. The man was delighted and lifted the spoon up. The beastman said that the master's food was excellent as always, and Mir added that it was still the best. The male magician said that the anthropomorphs, as he looked, were eating something delicious. Kanishi thought about canned cat food and said it was hard to explain, but it was for beastmen. The man also tried the canned cat food and said it was quite tasty. Kanishi thought about the fact that they had come here without having lunch. They must be very hungry. It's useless to fight with an empty stomach. While the bonfire was burning, everyone was discussing an offensive plan. The base is about 10 kilometers away. Their enemies are 50 bandits, so it is necessary to develop a plan. Anama said they would attack after all while they were sleeping. Kanishi agrees and says that if they approach by truck, they will definitely wake up. Kanishi then asked if there was a gate there. The anthropomorph said that most likely, because they are in the old castle. Grandpa the magician said he would deal with them. Kanishi asked his grandfather if he could take them down with magic. Grandpa said Kanishi was almost right. Kanishi thinks that maybe it's better to attack not while sleeping, but when they drink. The young knight said that he agreed to this proposal. With alcohol, the reaction slows down and, depending on the situation, there will also be no organization, and they will definitely have dinner without reservation. Kanishi thinks that in this world they start having dinner and drinking alcoholic beverages around evening and they will get drunk in about two hours. Then he calls Mier and says that he is giving her a radio for 30,000 yen. He says it's a magical attribute that they can use to communicate from a distance. He tells Miara that he wants to ask her to keep an eye on them, 
She will report on the movement of enemies. If there is one of the signalers, then she must remove him. Then he shows the girl how to use it. He clarifies that they, beastmen, have good night vision and dark fur, so they will easily dissolve into the environment. After a while, Mier is in the thicket of the forest. Kanishi turns to Mier and asks if she can hear him. Mier is surprised and says that he hears her. At this time, a grandfather magician appeared behind the young man. He turns to the young man and says that even an imperial magician does not have such magical attributes. Kanishi turned to his grandfather and asked him not to spread the word. Kanishi then remembers that he promised to give them shields. He buys five polycarbonate armor shields for 40,000 yen each. They say that although it is thin, it will not break so easily. Maybe they can really beat the step. Kanishi thinks that, of course, everything has cost him dearly. Then he turns to the young knight and asks if he needs a shield. The young man thanks Kanishi and says that he does not need a shield. He also buys a polycarbonate round shield for 15,000 yen to one of the anthropomorphs. He thinks that the beastmen need a smaller shield to make it easier for them to move, and yet war requires a lot of money. For himself, he bought a laser pointer for pneumatics. You will have to fight in the dark, so it does not hurt to fix it on a crossbow. At close range, if you point the pointer at the target, you will definitely hit it. It will definitely be difficult for the local to get used to it, so he will keep it only for himself. He then turns to Anama and says that they rely on her. The woman replied by turning around, which she remembered. If they don't return in a day, then she must inform the guild in the city about the failure of the assignment. Kanishi agrees. Anama says she doesn't like to report anything to government agencies, so she asks them to come back alive. After a while, late at night, Kanishi turned to Mier and told her to report the situation. The girl hid in the bushes and said that the castle was surrounded by a stone wall, and there were large wooden gates. Kanishi asked if there were any enemies. Mier replied that there was a tower above the wall and how many people were standing there. Kanishi asks if anyone is inside the castle. The girl replies that, judging by the voices, there are a lot of them. Kanishi thinks that even though he understood everything, it seems that it will be more difficult. He turns to the knight and says that they have already waited long enough, so the time has already come. The young knight replied that it was time to move out. Then the beastman turned to the gentleman and threw him an object. The grandfather magician said that the young man had no experience in battles, so he needed to bite through this object. Then the man bites through and almost spits out this object, saying that it is very bitter. His tongue is numb and he can't pronounce anything. He asks what it is and if he's really okay. The beastman laughed and told Kanishi not to worry, because everything will work now. Kanishi realized that it was dark, but suddenly everything brightened and became clear. Then he noticed that he couldn't stop laughing. Kanishi asks what it is and if it is not some kind of prohibited substance. The beastman said that if Kanishi overdo it, he might lose his head, but he had to be a fool. Kanishi realized that it was a substance after all. After a while, he passes the information to Mier and says that they have moved on, so the girl should be ready. Mier said that she understood, and then said that she would remove everyone with a signalman. The truck accelerates. Kanishi thinks they're going to attack now, and he's having a lot of fun. So much fun that he can't hold back. Finally they reach the tower. Kanishi shouts at Grandpa to light up. The man begins to cast a spell and summons the forest that grows in the abyss and is connected to the endless void. He asks him to grant him the power that comes from a dying soul. He summons a magical explosion. The beastmen thought that it was very cool, so they asked Grandpa to do it again. The man said that it would not work today, because it was too strong a spell. Then Kanishi, in a truck, demolishes the castle gate. The bandits, who had already fallen asleep, woke up abruptly and began to get up. Kanishi thinks that as they expected, they did not expect the attack at all. Kanishi announces the command to fire crossbows. Most of the bandits were hit by arrows. Some of them took their swords and chased after the warriors to kill them. However, the beastmen joined the battle, who wielded excellent weapons. They were happy that the blade was going very well. At that moment, the young knight got off the truck and took out his sword. At that moment, a man attacked him, but the young man said that his wolf fang was thirsty for blood. In an instant, he dodges the man's punch and then makes a sweeping attack and cuts him in half. The young man looked at the blade and said that the blade was still going well. Kanishi thinks that both the beastman and the knight are so cool, though the knight seems completely different and scary. He thinks that they still have enough strength. Then he notices a crowd of bandits coming straight at the truck. Kanishi thinks there are so many more left but he won't lag behind the others either. He calls for an excavator and then gets behind the wheel. He then uses the bucket and its circular movements. The bandits screamed that it was a monster and they began to beg for help. Kanishi asked what the bandits were mumbling, 
and then asked where the Primura was. Suddenly, he heard a high-pitched voice and saw a room with girls. Kanishi realized that there were other prisoners besides the Primura. He shouts at all the girls to take cover. Suddenly, everyone was shouted at by a man who ordered them to look directly at him. Kanishi thought that this was the step. The man said that he did not think that the rescuers would bring a magician controlling monsters to bring this girl back. He says it's time for them to put down their guns. At this moment, the man was holding a sword next to the Primura and smiling maliciously. Kanishi saw the Primura and told him what he was allowing himself and demanded that he immediately release the Primura. He replied that they needed to put down their weapons, because the girl's life was now in his hands. Kanishi thought he sounded just like a real villain, although he also uttered the words of a hero. What is he even thinking about now? Because even though he understands with his head, it seems that because of that nut, he completely lost his sense of fear. It's like he's watching some kind of TV series. Nevertheless, he knows for sure that he has to save the Primura. Suddenly, he throws out a torch and tells everyone to stop talking, and then grabs the Primura and tells the opponents to quickly put down their weapons. Then Shogger rips the blouse off Primura's body. The girl was very scared and started crying. Kanishi screamed and asked the man what he was doing. He screamed, holding the girl by the hair and said that if he knew, he should have disobeyed to know and played with her enough. Kanishi focused on what the bandit had said and thought that he had just said something very important. Then he turned to Mir in a whisper and asked the girl if she could hear him. Kanishi took out his laser pointer from his crossbow. He asked Mir if she saw a red dot on the body of the gang leader. He will blind his eyes with this ray, and the girl will shoot him with a bow. Kanishi asks the girl if she is ready, and then points the laser pointer directly at the man's eye. He lets go of the Primura and covers his eye with his hand. The next moment, Mir shoots an arrow from a block bow. He said it was, and then an arrow pierced his head. All the bandits were very surprised, but then a cloud of arrows flew at them. All the bandits were destroyed. A squad of warriors shouted that this was a victory, and they really killed everyone, and also that now all the money was theirs. The knight said it was too early to relax, because there were wounded here. Then they began to treat the wounded. Kanishi was surprised that Grandpa turns out to be able to heal. At this moment, the beastmen were shaking their ears, listening to their surroundings. Then they said they could only hear the girls crying and nothing else suspicious. However, as the knight said, you need to keep your eyes open. Kanishi turned to the Primura and asked her if she was okay. The girl rushed into the arms of the man. Kanishi realized that it looked like he was going to explode from overflowing feelings because of the nut. He calms himself mentally. Then he covers the girl with a cloak, and then asks the Primura if the leader of the step gang was really lying next to them. The girl agrees and says that the other bandits called him that. Kanishi turned to the knight and said that he had said one very important thing. The knight agreed and said that he was talking about a connection with the nobility. The mayor added that Shaga said that he was paid by someone from the nobility for the kidnapping. The knight was surprised and said that if the Primura was telling the truth, then it would not lead to anything good. Although he guessed that there were rotten people among them, he did not think that so much. Kanishi thinks that he kidnapped a girl who is famous all over the city and probably wanted to make her a servant and play with her enough. Kanishi turned to the knight and asked if he could check the bandit's base and find evidence. Of all of them, only the knight understands the affairs of the nobility. The knight agreed. Then Mir turned to Kanishi and said that these bandits were stealing girls from different villages. Kanishi bought 20 blankets and said that they should not be left like that, so Mir should give it to everyone. Kanishi said they came from Dahlia to deal with the step bandits. They won't touch the girls, so they don't have to worry. If they want to return home, the man can take them. All the girls were delighted. In the end, only nine girls decided to return to their homeland. For many reasons, the rest preferred to go to the big city of Dahlia. After a while, Kanishi was called by one of the girls. She said they hadn't washed in days. There is a well nearby, so they would like to wash at it. The man gives the girl a flashlight and says they can do whatever they want. He can also give them soap and clothes. He buys 20 blouses and 20 skirts, and then asks the girls if they like such clothes. Primura comes up to him and says that she also needs clothes. Then Mir turns to Kanishi and says that this child also needs to be washed. Kanishi thinks it's a boy. Her hair is disheveled and there is dirt on her face, so it's not entirely clear. Kanishi turns to Primura to wash this boy, and then shows her a pair of scissors and tells her to use this. The girl asks what it is. Kanishi says that you can cut your hair like this. The Primura approaches the man and asks if it is also possible to sell it in their stores. After a while, he notices a mountain of bandits' corpses. Despite the fact that he was under a nut at the time, it won't work that way. Moreover, those who received from him have more injuries than others. He then turns to the beastman and asks what he is doing. 
The man replies that it is necessary to provide the head of the leader as proof. A large reward was promised for his life. To convince the guild, they need to identify the bandit by sight. Kanishi is facing this for the first time, and for them, adventurers, this is already a familiar thing. Kanishi realized that the other world was cruel after all. That's what happens if you step out of town. He says that then he will put the heads in the inventory. After a while, a girl turned to Kanishi and said that these clothes were very becoming to everyone. However, it is inconvenient for them to receive such good clothes. Kanishi replied that they shouldn't worry about it. Then he looked at the child and realized that she was a girl. She had her hair cut and now you could see her face. He buys the simplest baby dress for 3,000 yen. Kanishi told the girl that this dress suits her very well, and Primura asked her what her name was. The girl awkwardly approached Kanishi. She said her name was Buttercup. Kanishi smiled and said that it was a good name and he was very pleased to meet her. After a while, the beastmen were completely immersed in searching for the bandits' treasures, but it was already getting dark, so he and the girls decided to spend the night. Buttercup snuggled up to Kanishi while sleeping. Everything has been resolved, and he thinks they will be able to return safely to Dahlia. It's finally morning. Kanishi turned to the beastmen, pointing to a huge pile of treasures, and asked if they could really take it all with them. He also pointed out some things and asked if this was really what was taken off the bandits. The man replied that it was possible to sell it all and wasn't it a pity to leave it all here. Kanishi smiled and said that he would have to put everything in the inventory. They replied that they did not even doubt the master. Then he sends the guys fishing and says he will cook breakfast. Suddenly one of the girls replies that vegetables can be taken from the garden behind the castle. Kanishi thanks her. Then he says he will cook the meat. He needs to celebrate this victory, so he buys several kilograms of meat, namely 12 kilograms of sliced pork. Then he starts cooking, and the girls have already brought the vegetables. Buttercup also helped carry vegetables. Kanishi thinks he feels like he's forgotten something. Suddenly, a knight calls him. The man said that as Kanishi asked, he checked the castle and found evidence of the bandit's connection with the nobility. Kanishi took the letter in his hands and said they weren't very smart to leave it, or they were so sure that no one would find out. The knight replied that the second one was definitely not. If they were related to the nobility, they would definitely know about the attack. Kanishi said they would have run away beforehand. The knight agrees. Kanishi tells the knight that he wants to ask him to figure it out, and then adds that he seems to have forgotten about something important. At this moment, Anama intrudes into his thoughts. Kanishi realized that he had completely forgotten about her. The woman immediately ran to meet him. Anama ran to the Primura and said that she was so glad that everyone was okay and the daughter of the head of the company, Meru. Primura said Kanishi saved her. The girls were surprised that Kanishi and the group had just left for Anama, but had already returned. The beastman replies that, as he has already said, the car without the master's horses is as fast as the beastman's legs. Suddenly, Anama notices Buttercup. The woman says that there is even such a child here. If her daughter were alive, she would be her age. Kanishi asked if Anama really had a child. The woman replied positively. She said her daughter died during the epidemic. This child was from a man with whom she had spent just one night, already like 10 years ago. Kanishi thinks that medicine is at a low level in this world, so the mortality rate of children is quite high. At this moment, the beastmen were simply delighted with the master's better food. Kanishi said that the girls helped him today. The girl with the dark hair said that they only peeled the vegetables. The other girls were happy with the soft and delicious buns and said they didn't even need soup. Kanishi thinks that in this world bread is so hard that people are used to dipping it in soup. Everyone liked the food again today. Anama was feeding Buttercup at that moment. Kanishi thought that Anama saw a dead child in the girl, and, without noticing it, began to take care of her. The girl doesn't look unhappy, so they left them. After breakfast, the men began to clear the castle completely again. They're even going to dig up all the vegetables from the garden and take them with them. Kanishi thinks that a huge amount of cargo has fit into his inventory, so he wonders how much more will fit. At that moment, the grandfather magician was watching him. The man turned to Kanishi, sighed and said that if the nobility found out that he had such a large inventory, it would not seem enough to him. Kanishi told the girl that if he kept quiet, no one would know. Grandpa replied that he wasn't going to talk but Kanishi wouldn't be able to keep anyone quiet. Kanishi understands that no one is capable of keeping others silent. However, there is no turning back time. He will earn as long as he has the opportunity, and if anything, he will have to run. Finally, they decided to move out of the castle. First you need to take nine girls to their villages. Kanishi then asks Buttercup which village she is from. The girl replies that she is from the village of Europe. Adventurers say it's pretty far away. 
Kanishi asks how far it is. He is told that it is about 75 leagues from here, that is, 120 kilometers. Kanishi asks Buttercup that if she wants to come back, he can take her. Buttercup starts shaking his head. Anama hugs the girl and tells Kanishi that she was probably sold because of the lack of money in the family. Kanishi tells Anama that they will take the girls home now, so there is no time to shed tears. Anama wipes away her tears and replies that she understood. Kanishi sits down next to Buttercup and asks if she will go to Dahlia with everyone. The girl nods positively. Kanishi says it's time to take a lap. No matter how much you drive, the rough terrain does not end. She left the castle and drove along the roads between the cities to the villages. Before leaving, they sent one anthropomorph to the city to report the victory over the bandits. So they provided themselves with time to go around the villages. As they approached the city, the girls disembarked one by one. They all asked to be dropped off away from the village, all in order to continue to live my old life in peace. He gave them one gold coin each so that they could live for two months. Anama told Kanishi that he had been generous to everyone. Kanishi replied that they had suffered from bandits. He thinks they have a right to get some money. Anama replied that she had never heard of anyone doing that. Primura said that the man will be treated like a hero when he arrives in Dahlia. Kanishi laughed and told her not to flatter him, because it didn't suit him. The Primura replied that it suits Kanishi very well, because fame did not move him. Kanishi said exactly what. He just wants to live a quiet life without frills. They finally arrived at Dahlia's place. The truck stopped at the Primura house, where Meru was standing at the gate. Primura ran out to her crying father. They hugged. Meru told his daughter that he was so glad that she was safe and sound. Other villagers were surprised that the owner's daughter was saved. Kanishi thought that everything was fine. Suddenly, one of the anthropomorphs said that they had defeated Shaga and his bandits. He demands that the one who laughed at them come out. The residents said they couldn't do it and maybe they just ran away from them. They were lucky to be safe. The man got angry and turned to Kanishi to get the head of the steps. Then the man shows the head and asks what is the head of the steps and what they will say about it. Then the residents were surprised and said that they were very cool and it was true that the head of the bandits. Kanishi thought that he still couldn't say that everything was resolved because he needed to inform the Adventurer's Guild. After a while, the anthropomorph threw the head of the steps and told the receptionist that it was the head of the steps, the leader of the gang. They can watch as much as they want. Then they were asked how many more heads they had. The anthropomorph replied that there were 52 of them. The male receptionist replied that he would have to spend the whole night to check each one. Kanishi then turned his attention to the knight. The young man said that he was a knight with the surname Nospal. He wants to see the head of the guild. He is asked to wait here for a minute. The young man tells Kanishi that he is going to meet Count Asclepius tomorrow. Kanishi asks if he will really report the connection of the nobility with the bandits. The young knight agrees. Kanishi replied that they were counting on the young man, because it was not so easy for them, ordinary people, to talk to the upper class. The young man replied that Kanishi could rely on him. Then the administrators began to examine the heads. All the guild employees started checking the gang members' ads. Naturally, there are no cameras in this world, so we compared the features of the bandits' faces with their portraits. It happened that they could reduce the reward due to personal hostility. That's probably why Nayakaro treats the guild with disdain. However, thanks to the knight, respect for them was high. Everything is going very well with a man from a noble family. The inspection of all the heads was over and they received 1,750 gold coins as a reward. There are about 115 gold coins per person. And plus, Kanishi will split the money from the sale of things collected in the bandits' lair equally. And because he prepared weapons and cooked food, 14 people gathered and decided to give him 80 gold coins. Money at any amount is needed. Kanishi asks Anama if 5 gold coins will be enough for her. The woman replied that she would not take anything because she had not done anything. Kanishi said she helped them. He asks her to take at least one coin. The woman thinks about it, and then says that she still cooked the food and she also wants to look after this child, so she will take a coin. Kanishi then gives the remaining girls one gold coin each. They ask if they can really take a whole gold coin. Kanishi says they need money to find shelter and a job, so they have to take that money. If there are problems, they can contact Anama or Grandpa. The girls beamed with joy and agreed. Kanishi thought that he had just come to this city, or rather to this world in principle. Primura also returned home safely. The city gates have already closed, so we need to find a place to spend the night today. He comes to the hotel, where Azalea meets him and says that she heard how someone who looked like a man destroyed a gang of bandits. Kanishi said it was someone else. Of course, this is a lie. 
If everyone finds out that he has a large sum with him, it will not seem enough. Then Azalea approaches Kanishi and asks the man if he remembers his promise to make her his mistress. Kanishi replies that he does not recall such a thing. Azalea seems to guess that he has money now. Azalea said it was cruel and she was just a toy. Kanishi apologized to the girl and told her to keep the change for herself. Then Azalea wants to say something, but notices someone. At that moment, Buttercup grabbed the young man by his clothes. The night passed after they defeated the bandits and returned to the city. Everyone gathered at the Adventurer's Guild again to sort out the treasures. They decided to sell the weapons and armor in the same shop where they bought the equipment. He goes into the shop and asks the merchant if he will buy weapons from them. The man agrees. Kanishi points to the mountain of weapons and says that's it. Equipment confiscated from bandits. If we take that from about 150,000 yen, then we will get about 7,800,000 yen. It turns out to be a pretty impressive amount. It is said that among the merchants there are many who have profited from this and thanks to this the market has increased to its current size. It was decided to sell the valuable items that Shaga collected to the Meru company carpets, ceramics and decorative swords. These goods will be bought by the nobility and the rich, and let the furniture stand in the girls' hardware store. And the hundred gold coins of the bandits were also divided among all. They sold everything and got 178 gold coins in their hands. They divided them into 15 people and each was left with 11 gold coins, and what was left, he gave to the girls. He tells everyone that the award from the guild will have to wait, so they will gather later. Kinishi walks down the street and thinks that the girls will already be able to find a place to work, so it's time to go home. At that moment, Buttercup was following the young man. Suddenly, the young man stops, and Buttercup bumps into his back. The man turns to the girl and asks her why she follows him. Yesterday, the girl followed to the hotel and stopped the same way, and in the morning she walks on her heels. The man doesn't understand what she wants. The girl said she wanted to be with Kanishi. The man asked if it wasn't better for the girl to be with Anama. The girl replied that the man's food was delicious. He points to the exit from the city and asks if the girl has heard that he lives in the forest. Buttercup gives a positive answer. The man said that magical wolves and insects live there. The girl agrees. Kanishi adds and says he won't be able to keep an eye on her. The girl agrees. Then the man says that there are snakes there. Buttercup agrees. Kanishi sighs and thinks that, however, he sees no reason to refuse. So he decided to live in the forest with Buttercup. After a while, they arrive at Kanishi's house and the man says that they have come. Buttercup was very surprised and said that the house was very beautiful. Then they go home. Kanishi says that since the girl is going to live here, she should get a bed. The girl starts to turn her head. Kanishi asks if the girl doesn't want to, then where will she sleep? Buttercup says she will sleep with Kanishi. Kanishi was surprised, and when he noticed Buttercup's sad look, he said that it wasn't because he didn't like her. Then he said that they would sleep together. Buttercup agrees. Kanishi thinks that her parents unexpectedly sold her. Then she was probably in shock, so she needs love and care. The man asks if she wants him to teach her how to read, write and count. The girl agreed. After receiving a great reward, everyone celebrated the victory. However, at the same time, there was a rumor that someone from the nobility had been stripped of his last name. The knight was promoted and given a small territory. Having received the highest praise, he accepts new residence. Kinishi was only worried about the consequences of the suspicious nut he ate before the fight and his life returned to the fact that Mier and Primura come to his house. Exactly one month has passed. The young man opens the door and sees Anama there. He said it was the first time a woman came here, and few people came from the city. The woman replied that it was creepy to come here. Then he asks the man if he could give her Buttercup. The man says that she is not some kind of kitten or puppy. They already start working at the age of 12. The girl already has the right to choose who to live with, so it's up to her to decide. Anama turns to Buttercup. The woman said that she would be able to learn how to trade and she would definitely not be bored anymore. The woman suggests that the girl live together and engage in trade. Buttercup replied that she wanted to stay with Kanishi. The woman is surprised, but says that if it gets hard for her, she can come to her whenever she wants. Buttercup agrees. Then Anama leaves and Kenchai realizes that it was a shock for her, so he does not understand if she is okay. However, this is Buttercup's choice, so he has no right to say anything. Buttercup stayed with the man, but in the city he heard that the nobility wanted to find him. People in the market do not like the rich, so they are silent, but for sure everything will close soon. But how else? They saw a truck, even an excavator, and how he carried everything on it. You can't keep people silent. 
he decides to start preparing to leave. To begin with, Kanishi collects all the marigolds. Then he dismantled the fence and removed the marigolds. I folded all the solar panels and switched to a diesel electric generator. That way he can run if anything happens. After a while, the man comes to Meru. Meru told the man that he was glad to see Kanishi. He would like to repay the debt for the equipment of things obtained during the campaign. Meru said the man was giving away valuable goods, even though they owed him that. Kanishi said that the man had only borrowed money to carry out that campaign, so as a merchant, he had to keep his word. Kanishi then gave Meru a drawing of a new trolley. He is confident that Meru will be able to handle it. Meru is surprised and says that it is uncomfortable for him to accept such a thing. Kanishi replies that everything is fine. Kanishi asked Meru, the girl who was held hostage by the gangsters, if they had found a job. The man agreed and told Kanishi not to worry about them. He was told that they were working well. Primura asks Kanishi if he understands that he needs to worry more about himself than others. Kanishi asks if the girl really means people from the nobility. He had heard about this rumor in the city. The man said they had nothing to worry about without him. Primura asks Kanishi if he is really going to leave the city. Kanishi replied that he was just considering such an option. The Primura asks if it's worth coming to an audience at the palace once and listening to their side. The owner of this land, Count Asclepius, is not such a bad person. Kanishi said that if they found out that he was a strong magician and ordered him to be captured, then they would not be able to stop them. Primura said Kanishi was right. Kanishi thought that Meru and his daughter had helped him a lot, but he thinks that by saving Primura he returned his debt, so it's time to go. After a while, he comes home. He tells Buttercup that he has decided to leave this place. If he stays, he may be kidnapped by people from the nobility and forced to work for them. He asks the girl what she will do and if she will go to Anama. Buttercup replies that she wants to stay with Kanishi. The man says that they will spend the night in the open air until they find a place to live. Buttercup agrees. Kanishi thinks that it is impossible to leave her, having only taught her to write and read a little. He thinks that she is better off at Anama's, but since Buttercup decided so herself, she will not interfere. Since that's the case, he will prepare for tomorrow's departure. All furniture and dishes need to be disassembled and either thrown away or put in inventory, as well as the fence with marigolds. For transportation, he bought a mountain bike for 100,000 yen. Now people drive trolleys in the city, so he will probably be able to come up with something, saying that this is his unusual option. It's good if he finds a place for a measured life. He specifically chose a double engine because Shangri-La had engine oil for him. He is more concerned about the house and whether it will fit into the inventory if the truck fits. He screams for the house to go into inventory. Suddenly, the house disappeared and ended up in the inventory. The inventory counted as part of the house, but the foundation also disappeared with it. Kanishi tells Buttercup that they are going to ride a motorcycle now, so she has to wear this helmet. Buttercup agrees. They're on their way. Kanishi turns to Buttercup and tells her to put her feet on the ledges on the side and hold on to him. The girl agreed. Kanishi thought that was great. While they are driving, Buttercup should not move. He says it's time to go. Suddenly a forest cat appears. Kanishi tells the cat to take care of himself too, and then he says goodbye. Kanishi is heading west, towards the road connecting the cities. There is no need to hurry, it will go at a speed of 10 to 20 kilometers per hour. If there's anything to regret, it's that he couldn't say goodbye to the Marrow family and all those who helped him. However, it would be a difficult breakup, and he would not want to involve them in my escape. That's how it should be. Then Kanishi saw a cat next to him, running along with a motorcycle. Kanishi said that they were leaving here and how could a cat leave his native forest? Kanishi asks the cat if he really wants to go with them and if he is really sure. The cat began to rub against the young man. Kanishi buys a container for clothes and glues it with self-adhesive paper with imitation wood so that it is not so noticeable, and secure it from behind. Kanishi turns to the cat and says that he can't make him run after the motorcycle. If he wants to go with them, then he will have to sit in this box. Instantly, the cat jumps into the box. Kanishi looks at the cat and hopes that it won't fall out of the box. However, he's a wild animal. He won't get hurt by falling from such a height. That's how they set off. Kanishi thinks there's a road waiting for them, surrounded by trees. It's good if they get to a place where there is water, by a lake or pond with a good view. He wonders if he will be able to carry out his measured life this time. The money is already there. He may not open his inventory for a long time to sell something. If he doesn't stand out, then no one will suspect him of anything. We need to try to use local money and buy local products. Another way to live a new life is to extract minerals from the mountains and sell them on Shangri-La. 
There is also an excavator and tools. You just need to earn more than you will spend on fuel. And yet, he had heard about another person who also came from another world, but he would not like to meet him. However, he has a lot of time to think about everything. Suddenly, he notices a familiar carriage. Kanishi catches up with the cart and greets Fuyo, and also says that they haven't seen each other for a long time. Fuyo remembers Kanishi. Kanishi says he was able to become a merchant. Fuyo is very happy and then asks where Kanishi is going. He asks if this is really the most popular trolley, and then asks who this girl is. He also notes the adorable forest cat. Kenny says that this is his own trolley, and the girl and the cat are his faithful friends. They are heading to a destination trip. Fuyo said that he wished the man a good road. Kanishi thanks the young man and leaves. After a while, the young man buys a fishing rod and catches fish. Buttercup is happy that there are a lot of fish in the river. Kanishi cleans the fish and says that it has very beautiful scales. In the past world they were kind of called rainbow trout. He puts it in his inventory and is surprised that it is also called. He understands that he still needs to fish. Although he is leisurely fishing now, he, Kanishi, is an uncle who has suddenly moved to another world. His ability is to sell and buy goods on a site that is connected to the past world, called Shangri-La, an inventory capable of storing a huge number of things. To survive in a new world, you need money. Therefore, he decided to use Shangri-La's website and sell goods on the market. Meeting with different people with anthropomorphs, the trade was successful. However, problems do happen. They successfully managed to save the daughter of a major merchant. Primura, but, due to the fact that it happened in front of all the residents of the city, now the nobility is looking for him. Buttercup was glad that Kanishi had caught the fish again. He had to leave the city, taking with him the orphan Buttercup, whom he would free from the hands of bandits and a forest cat. After all, it's more fun in the company. They are only on the way to find a new place to live. Then he gets an idea and buys a drone with a camera for 20,000 yen. The forest cat and Buttercup did not understand what they were talking about. Kanishi wonders if it will be possible to launch it and check the landscape of the nearest area. He launches the drone directly into the sky. Buttercup was glad that it was some kind of magic and he was flying steeply. Kanishi agreed and said that this was the maximum flight altitude of about 100 meters. He thought that it was possible to see a fairly large area. At first glance, this is a river flowing into a lake. There is a small village nearby and the castle is nearby, which means Astrans. Then Kanishi realizes that there is a waterfall here and they can drink water there, so he calls Buttercup and the forest cat. After a while, they drive up to the shore. Buttercup said it was very beautiful. Kanishi agreed that the view was very good. He decides that they will set up a second camp here. He wishes the almighty gods to forgive him and help him. Now he's taking the house out of the inventory. Suddenly a whole house appears. Suddenly Kanishi hears a meow. He realized that the forest cat had walked right up to here. Kanishi realizes that the forest cat needs to at least come up with a name if he is going to continue living with them. He asks Buttercup how about naming the cat Val. Buttercup said she thinks it's a cute name, but why exactly that name? Kanishi said it feels just like Velvet. Buttercup started scratching the forest cat and greeted him. Kanishi said he didn't know if he understood or not. Already at night, Kanishi thinks that tomorrow he will need to install solar panels and plow the garden and again he will have to resort to an excavator. The only problem remains with diesel fuel, because it is not sold on Shangri-La. Now he uses expensive kerosene, but I would like to find a cheaper option. Once he saw on TV how used oil was converted into biodiesel, he will try to study some materials on this topic. Then Buttercup asked what the young man was doing. Kanishi replied that he was reading a book. Buttercup was surprised and asked what she wanted to. Kanishi said that the letters are different from those in this country, so she won't be able to read. Buttercup said that she wants to learn to read in the language of the young man. Kanishi then buys a book with illustrations for 500 yen. The man said that he would first draw her a hurigana with a transcription. Buttercup opens the book and begins to read the beginning of the story syllabically. Eventually, Buttercup immersed herself in her studies. Kinishi also installed a toilet, a bathtub and solar panels. Almost everything is as it was in the previous house. All that remains is to make a vegetable garden. Suddenly Kinishi heard rustling in the bushes. He turns around and sees as if something has attacked him. Kanishi asks if it's really Marais. Mir said it was not easy to trace the scent of the forest cat and the young man's cart. Kanishi asked if this was really the case. If she could only find them by smell, then they couldn't escape from the anthropomorphs. The man realized that the girl was watching him, but what would she do now? Mir replied that she would live with him. Kanishi agrees and says that she will get the food herself, and he will send her shopping in the city. Buttercup got distracted and said that Mir had come. Mir was delighted and told Buttercup that she would now live here too. 
Buttercup was very happy. Then Mir suddenly notices such beautiful pictures in Buttercup's book. Kanishi understands that few people can read, so you can sell picture books. Having bought a Shangri-La printer, he will be able to print them himself. They are very valuable here, so thin ones will do too. But stories from the past world will not go. Kanishi asked the girls if they knew any fairy tales. Buttercup said that she knows a fairy tale about a forest elf princess. Since then, taking care of the vegetable garden and studying biodiesel. In his spare time, he drew illustrations and considered ways to print a book. Then he decides to try to print. Nier asked Kanishi if he really knows how to make books. The man then uses the rotator to print. He draws on special paper, installs it in a rotator and uses printing. The cover for the book was ready. Nier and Buttercup were very happy. Then Kanishi says that now you need to collect the printed sheets and you should get 12 pieces. After a while, the book really turned out. Nier and Buttercup were happy. Nier turns to Buttercup and asks what is written here. Buttercup begins to read that a long time ago, deep in the forest, there lived a beautiful elf. Nier said that Buttercup is so good and can read letters. Kanishi goes outside and suddenly he notices a boat approaching. Kanishi sees several people and thinks it's an attempted break-in. Kanishi pulls out a crossbow and asks the men who they are and what they are doing here. The man in the boat asked Kanishi to stop and told him to put away what he was holding in his hands, because they live in that village on the other side. Kanishi realized that this was a fishing village, and there were two men in the boat and an anthropomorph with them. Kanishi said he was a merchant and had the right to live here. The man agrees and says that they thought there were bandits here and decided to check it out. Suddenly, Vol came up to Kanishi. The anthropomorph screamed and asked why the forest cat was with him. The man asked who the forest cat was. Kanishi picked up Vel and said he was their family member. The anthropomorph said that he believed this man. Forest cats don't usually get attached to people. Kanishi can't be a bad person. The man was surprised and said that since the anthropomorph says so, it means that it is. He would like to introduce himself. The man says his name is Curtin and he lives in the village of Ixora. He used to work in abstraction as a civil servant. He is very pleased to meet merchant Kanishi. Then, after talking to them, Kanishi returns home. Ludic asks if everything was okay. Kanishi responds positively and says that they were residents of a nearby village. They didn't want a bad person to be here, so they came to check. During the study of plants, Kanishi placed the plant in the inventory. Then he goes to the guild in the city and finds out how valuable it is. Then Mir jumps on Kanishi. The man says that he is collecting herbs, but the girl is bothering him. After a while, they arrive at Estration. Kanishi saw what this city looked like. Kanishi thinks he's smaller than Dahlia. There are trolleys here too. First, they need to register with the Adventurer's Guild. Buttercup raises his hand and says that she will go too. Nier replies that she is coming too. They reach the Adventurer's Guild. Kanishi says that the guild here is a little smaller than in Dahlia. A man thinks that in this world a guild is like a job site, so there are always a lot of people here. Then he goes to the reception desk, where the receptionist greeted the man and asked what he was interested in. Kanishi thinks she has quite a curvy figure. It is very important. He thinks that girls at the counter really have to look like that everywhere. Kanishi says he wants to register. The girl asks him to wait a bit. She goes into another room, and then in a hurry returns and addresses Kanishi, apologizing. She asked if he had really defeated the step bandits. Kanishi asked her not so loudly. Then the registration was completed. For two, it costs two silver coins, that is, about 100,000 yen. The man gives the girl money. He then asks if she has an encyclopedia of plants. The girl agrees and says that she has two small silver coins. Only this will be a small book for novice herb gatherers. Kanishi is presented with a book for novice herb gatherers. The girl says that she also buys medicinal plants. Kanishi is looking through an encyclopedia. Kanishi says that he would like to sell some herbs, but this herb with black and red round berries was not indicated in the book. The girl agrees and says that its red fruits are used as a seasoning. For such a fresh stem, the guild gives one small silver coin per branch. The man says he is ready to sell. Now we have the money, we can go and have a snack. They're going to the market. The man buys the girl's food, but they don't like it. Kanishi thinks that soup without broth and hard bread. It's very tasteless. There are no problems with the economy, but in this world there is trouble with spices and food. He decides to cheat. Dried tuna broth and a little pepper. Kanishi says that, although a little, it has gotten better. The girls were very happy and said that it was delicious now. Then he notices the hardware store by the white flower garden. Kanishi thinks it smells like treasure, so they decide to go there. They go inside and are greeted by a woman who says she has not seen a man and girls before. Kanishi says he came from Dahlia. The woman says that if he is from Dahlia, then he probably knows Grandpa the Magician. 
The man agrees and says that they know each other. A woman asks a man what he wants to buy. Kanishi notices a strange device on the table next to the woman and asks what it is used for. The woman was surprised that he was interested in such things. Then she says that then she will show you how to use it. The woman takes out a jug of liquid, and Kanishi realizes that this is the smell of a strong drink. Into a wide funnel, wine, into a funnel in the middle, clear water. Very thick wine drips on the right, and the same clear water flows out on the left. Kanishi asks if it really divides into certain ingredients what to add to a wide funnel. The woman said the man was smart. The ingredient that the man will pour into the middle funnel will come out on the left side. Kanishi said that if you add water to it, then all the water from the wine will go away. The woman agreed and said that alchemists use it. He understands that he can use it to safely prepare biodiesel. The man tells the woman that he will take it. Then he asks the woman if she has anything interesting. A woman shows a book with magic spells. Finally, a man sees magic spells. It definitely sounds like something fantastic. A man asks a woman if, after reading it, he can really learn how to use magic. The woman said that without magic powers, no matter how much you read, there is no use. It is expensive, but after reading it, you can sell it for a decent amount. Kanishi thinks she's worth 10 gold coins. He thinks about what it's like without magic in another world and whether it's time for him to study it. He says he's buying it. The woman thanks him for buying the book. Books with magic spells need to be registered, so the man will be able to pick it up only in a week, so he will have to wait. Then the man says he will take more medicine. Kanishi then thinks that they have already explored the city well enough while waiting for the guild registration, but they are still tired. It was possible to come back once. Suddenly, he notices bandits and a man he knows, whom he recently met. It seems that his name is Crouton. He notices a little girl behind him and, really, it's his daughter. Suddenly, Buttercup pulls him back and asks the man if he will help them. Kanishi notices this face again and the uncle is weak in front of such eyes. Kanishi realizes that there is no way out. To begin with, it is impossible for them to see his face, so you need to find a mask for Shangri-La. This design made his forgotten schoolboy soul shudder. 7,500 yen is expensive, but the moment has come when a man needs to buy it. He turns to the hooligans and orders them to stand. He asks how they dared to attack a good man and his child. The bully asks Kanishi if he really wants to get it too. He lights a lighter and the bullies think it's magic. Kanishi then buys explosive firecrackers and launches them directly at the hooligans. He asks them how they like his magic and next time they will explode inside them. The hooligans ran away and begged for help. Suddenly, a crowd gathered. Kanishi took off his mask and said that the people had run away, so they had to run. He turned to Kruton. After a while, Kuthon said that that mask was Kanishi. The man said it was good that they were not injured. The man thanked Kanishi for saving them. Kanishi said he was more interested in who attacked them. The man replied that he had known them since he worked as a civil servant. After he arrested them, they are still taking revenge on him. Every time they see him in the city, they attack him, even though his daughter was with him today. Kanishi said that if it's dangerous to be in the city, then why don't they move? The man says he thought about it, but they have nowhere to go. Kanishi said that right near Dahlia, people are now being called to Baron Nospal's domain. He knows the Baron, so if they want to eat, then he can write a recommendation. If a man is a former civil servant, then he will definitely be given a good job. The man says that this is all very well, but they need to be given some time to think. Then he notices Buttercup and the man's daughter and thinks that they have become friends. Kanishi thinks that Buttercup didn't have anyone close in age around, so maybe this is her first friend. After a while, Buttercup's new friend, Marie, started coming every day. And Kanishi, at Buttercup's request, started making a new book. Surely the girl really wants to show the new book to her friend. And the moment came when all that remained was to print the book. Suddenly, the man saw Curtin, who was running straight to Kanishi's house in a hurry. The man dropped a huge bag of coins. He started collecting them and asked Kanishi to help him. Kanishi asked the man what happened and asked him to explain to him. Corton said that Marie had a fever and was very ill. He asked Kanishi if he could sell him medicine for the money. Kanishi was surprised and asked what Marie was sick of. Curtin said that according to the head of the village, there is an epidemic among children now, and not many are recovering. Kanishi goes to Shangri-La and thinks that first you need to buy an antipyretic, but it's probably something more serious. Antipyretics alone will not help. Suddenly, Buttercup calls him and asks what happened to Marie. Kanishi says that Marie has a disease that is transmitted only to children. Despite her concern, it's not worth visiting her. Buttercup turned to Kanishi and told him to save Marie. Kanishi thought that he wanted to help her, but he didn't think there were any serious drugs on Shangri-La. He turns to Corton and says that one gold coin is enough for him. 
He gives him pills and says it will lower his temperature for a while. He should give her one pill. Curtin thanked the man. Then he thinks about a disease that cannot be cured with medicine, so maybe magic will help. He thinks about the magic of healing and remembers the granny from the hardware store. Kenishi says that he knows a grandmother who may be able to heal with magic. He will call her, so Curtin must prepare the payment. Curtin should also give Marie medicine. Kanishi then turns to Mier and says that she remains in charge. Buttercup shouted that she would go too, but Kanishi told the girl to sit with Mier. With a child pandemic, it is dangerous to leave the house, so he prepared food for a few days for two. Kanishi gets on a motorcycle and drives away, but Buttercup stays and hopes for the best. Then Kanishi drove up to his grandmother's friend, and after a while he comes to Curtin and Marie. Grandma examined Marie and said that as she thought, it was chicory fever. Then she turned to the man and said that he seemed to have been given medicine, and then asked what it was made of. Kinishi replied that it was made of willow. The woman replied that the man knows so much. He's been buying magic attributes recently, so maybe he's still doing alchemy. Kinishi said something like that. The woman said that this fever is difficult to cure with magic. Kinishi asked what to do then. The woman replied that there was a river on the way to Ixora. Its source is a spring, it is located deep in the forest. Flowers grow there, the seeds of which help against chicory fever. Kinishi asked about the spring in the forest and said he would collect them. You can get there on his special trolley in no time. The woman said that it was impossible to argue. However, it is the territory of the elves. The woman says that if he meets them, he must get out somehow, and one more flower will be enough. According to the woman, elves are quite a closed people. It's not like in a fantasy where everyone is friends with each other, but Kanishi would like to get to know them. Curtin says he's going too. The flowers grow 20 kilometers from the village, deep in the forest. However, in the evening and at night it becomes more dangerous there. The anthropomorph says that, in that case, it wouldn't hurt for him to join them too. Kanishi thinks that you can feel confident with a beastman. It even seems that he and the anthropomorph are enough, but as a father, he cannot sit still. There is no time to waste, because it is already dark outside, so you need to get out soon. After a while, the anthropomorph was carrying Curtin on his back and tells Kanishi that his transport is going very fast. Kanishi does not lag behind them at all and this magical light is also cool, and his hands remain free. Kanishi bought headlamps for 4,000 yen. Kanishi said it didn't matter. We need to get the seeds for the medicine as soon as possible. Then they come to the stream, and then to the pond. They look at the flowers that are in the water. Kanishi says it's night. Flowers close into a bud, but their purpose is not flowers, but fruits. They can't be reached from the shore, so he buys a large rubber boat for 30,000 yen. He activates the boat. Curtin asks Kanishi what it is. Kanishi replies that it is a rubber boat. Curtin is surprised that he even has a boat in his inventory. The anthropomorph tells Curtin that they are very lucky that this gentleman has come. Curtin agrees. At this time, Kanishi swims away to get flowers. He takes out the fruit that was located on a white flower and then cuts it off. Kanishi throws the fruit to Curtin. Curtin was happy and thanked Kanishi that his daughter would be saved. At that moment, the anthropomorph shouted that something was approaching them. Suddenly, eyes poked out of the bushes, and then Vol came out. Kanishi exhaled and said it was Vel, and then asked him not to scare them. He approached the cat and started stroking it, and then asked if it was really following him. Vol positively meowed. Suddenly, Vol felt something. He turned around and started looking somewhere. Kanishi turned to Vel, but the cat suddenly hissed. The anthropomorph told everyone to be careful, because something is coming again and these are animals, which are not few. In an instant, they were surrounded by a huge number of wolves that bared their teeth. Kanishi realized that these were black wolves, so it was time for a rematch. He immediately took out his weapon. He turned to Nana's and Curtin, and then told them to use weapons. Then he handed the fruit to Curtin and told him to take the fruit to Marie as soon as possible, and he would detain these magical black wolves. The man shouted and said Kanishi was crazy, and the anthropomorph told Mr. Kanishi not to talk nonsense. Kanishi said that he knows how to use magic, so he and Vel have more than enough. He told them to run faster, because all their efforts would be in vain if Curtin did not have time to deliver the medicine. At that moment, Nyanas repelled the attack of one of the black wolves. Curtin didn't know what to do, but at one point he noticed one of the black wolves rushing straight at him. Curtin plunged his sword right into the wolf. Kanishi fought off the wolves and told Curtin to move, because his daughter's life was on him. Curtin closed his eyes, and then the babysitter took Curtin and ran away from the wolves. Kanishi smiled and thought that anthropomorphs have the ability to develop such a speed that wolves will definitely not be able to catch up with them. 
Kinishi turns to Vel and says they're not going to lose either. Kinishi opens the inventory menu and says he's summoning an excavator. He uses a deadly technique, the vortex of the excavator, and the impact of the excavator. Iron claws that carry death itself. Whoever gets from them is dead. Claws that fall from the night mist and bring death. Whoever gets from them is dead. Then the wolves in a hurry run away from the young man and the forest cat. Kanishi got out of the excavator. Then he puts the excavator back, and then laughs and says that the black wolves are not so scary anymore. He's not even afraid of arrows and bullets. Suddenly, Vol grabs the young man by the collar and pulls him aside. Kanishi asks the forest cat what he was doing. Suddenly he sees an arrow in a tree. Kanishi realized that he had just been sitting and there was an arrow. The wolves can't launch it, so it means there's a new enemy. Kinishi realized that the light was so strongly reflected that it was impossible to see. He squints and notices golden ears and long hair. There was a man standing in front of him who was saying something to him. Kinishi realized that they were elves. Kinishi thought that it was right in front of his eyes, as if from some kind of fiction. Now, Kinishi understands why the black wolves left so suddenly. Kinishi raised his hands and told the elves to stop and added that he didn't want to hurt them. Then he turned to Vel and told him to stop baring his teeth. One of the elves looked at the young man and the cat carefully, and then turned away. After a while, he looked at the young man and threw something at him. Kinishi deftly caught the object and discovered that it was a ring. The elf tapped his finger, hinting that the man should put it on. Kinishi put on the ring, but did not understand what was going on. Suddenly, the elf turned to the man and asked him if he understood what he was saying. Kinishi was surprised and said that he understands it and this ring automatically translates languages. The elf asked Kinishi where he came from and why he came here, and if he was going to destroy the spring. Kinishi said it wasn't like that. His friend's daughter is sick with chicory fever and needs a fruit that grows nearby for medicine. The elf shouted at the man not to dare to lie. Suddenly, Vol stood up for Kinishi and put his paw in front of him. The elf asked why this cat was protecting such a man. Kinishi didn't like that phrase. Kinishi scratched his head. He said he really came for the medicine. As soon as they collected one, they were immediately surrounded by wolves. There was a question about the child's life, so the fruit of the beastmen that ran to the village, because they were still lucky. The elf youth looked at the bodies of the wolves and asked if it was really him who knocked down those wolves, and then asked what was glowing in his hands and whether he was a magician. Kinishi said that he is partly a magician, but he is also a merchant, so he asks the elves if they would like to buy something from him. He talks about spices, salt and the fact that his inventory has everything they want. The elves were surprised when they saw a package in the man's hands. The elf asked if the man really had salt. Kinishi agrees and says that he has many more unusual things, such as knives or books for the children of elves. The elf reads the book about the elf princess and asks if people really still think it's a beautiful story. Kinishi asks if this is really not the case. The elf says that for a start, people don't live as long as elves and yet, they won't be able to have children. The elf, unable to live in the village, among people, eventually returned to the forest. Kinishi asked if it was real, and he thought it was a legend five or six hundred years old. The elf said that it was only recently for them. He realized that Kanishi was a merchant. He's probably not a bad person, since the forest cat trusts him. However, there is not enough salt in their village, so if he agrees to the deal, then they can forgive him for invading their territory. Kinishi thought that to be honest, he was wondering how Marie was, but Curtin had the medicine and Grandma was with them, so there was nothing to worry about. If he gets an excavator, he will definitely be able to distract them from escaping. However, they know how to use magic, and they don't want problems in the future so it's worth obeying now. Kinishi agrees, and the elf tells him to follow them. After a while, they arrive at the elf village. Kinishi is taken to a house where a male elf offers him a place to stay. In front of him was a rather majestic male elf. He said he had been told that Kanishi was a merchant. They've probably already told him, but they don't have enough salt. If it's not too much trouble, he asks Kanishi to sell salt to them. Kanishi agreed and said that he was the one who bothered the elves, so, including as an introduction, he offers to give them for free. The elf replied that it would not do. To make a deal, you need to fill both scales, but they don't have much money. Kinishi wonders what to do, because, obviously, why do elves need money in the forest? Kinishi asks what about exchanging salt for this ring? An automatic translator from elvish is definitely a rare thing, so he won't hesitate to get it. The man says that if Kinishi doesn't mind, then they have an agreement. Kinishi gives away a bag of salt. The elf man says that this salt is enough for all families and they are now saved. 
The man thanks Kanishi. Kanishi then says that he still has a lot of things, for example, knives, spices. The elf replies that they are used to doing everything on their own, so he will be happy to accept only Kanishi's good intentions. Then the man says that it is dangerous at night, so Kanishi can spend the night in the village. Kanishi asks if this means that they believe his words that he did not intend to irrigate the spring. The elf smiles and says what they saw in their eyes. Kanishi doesn't quite understand if they're lying or not but maybe there's some kind of exposure magic. He doesn't mind spending the night, but he's hungry. Kinishi asks if he can light a fire in the village square and cook himself dinner. The elf allows it and says that, for sure, their food is not to their taste. After a while, Kinishi comes to the square in the village, where everyone was having fun and where it was very lively. Kinishi thought that the others had already explained everything, so they didn't look at him askance. It is impossible to interfere with the general atmosphere, so he will go to the side. He sits down and thinks about what to eat. He thinks about cooking noodles for him, because he hasn't eaten them for a long time. He takes out instant noodles and onigiri, which he will heat in a steamer. Suddenly, an elf girl came up to him and asked Kanishi what he was doing. Kanishi said he was cooking himself dinner. He is a foreigner, so he is not going to interfere with other elves, so he asks not to touch him. The girl looks into the pot and asks what it is. Kanishi says he's steaming a cereal dish. The girl said that she would warm it up with magic, so could she try it too. Kanishi asks if the girl is sure and then gives her one onigiri. The girl tries it and says it's very tasty. Kanishi is happy and says that even the elves understand how delicious it is. Then the girl asks what Kanishi is eating right now. Kanishi says it's a wheat flour dough stretched into strips. The girl replies that she wants to try it too. At that moment, Val was eating cat food. Suddenly, several more elves approached Kanishi and said that he had a pleasant aroma, so they asked him to give them a taste too. Kanishi said that for a restrained people, they are very persistent. He exhaled and said he could share, but he would have to pay. He asks them to show him edible forest herbs and mushrooms. The elf girl said she would go and collect them. Kanishi then asked if the elves were eating well. They don't understand what the man is talking about. Kanishi said that as he looked, they don't eat much, although that's probably all they have. The elves said that everything was fine. The girl replied that they have those those. Kanishi asked what it was. Then he is given a drink in a glass. Kanishi thinks it's red and smells like chocolate. He tastes and feels a bitter taste. Kanishi asks if this is by any chance some kind of sacred drink that you can't add anything to. The girl replied that they did not think so. Kanishi then says that he won't be shy then. He adds sugar and stirs. Then he gives the drink to the girl and asks her to try it. The girl tries and starts screaming, asking what it is and why it has such a deep and sweet taste. All the elves asked the girl to give them a try. Kanishi thought that with sugar, bitterness and sweetness became one. He is nostalgic for the taste of the past world. The color is a little red, but it's hot chocolate. Now it's clear where they get their nutrients from. Then the village headman came up to them and asked what the noise was. A girl came up to the head and told him to try it too. The man did not understand what the girl was offering him. The man tasted the drink, and then shouted to Kanishi what it was and what he put in it. Kanishi replied that he had only added sugar to it. Kanishi said that if the head of the village doesn't mind, he is ready to exchange the ingredients of this drink for this sugar. The elf girl said if this was really the case, and then suggests that the head agree to the deal, because they will be able to drink such yummy food every day. The head of the village says that, however, this taste will destroy the core in the elves, so he cannot agree. All the other elves started to rebel. In the end, the head was unable to resist the villagers who were under the total influence of chocolate. Is this really the destruction of the core that the head of the village was talking about? Soon after the hot chocolate party, he completely joined the company of elves. He couldn't help but capture such a fantasy world on camera. He also took a picture of a forest kitten. That's how the night went. The next morning, the head of the village thanked Kanishi for selling them salt, so the man could come to them again. Kanishi said he should be the one thanking the elves. He lives by the lake into which the river flows. If they need anything else, he will prepare everything, so they can visit him at any time. The elf girls say that this means that it will be possible to pay with them instead of money. Kanishi thought that despite the situation, he would like to know what was wrong with Marie. He calls for a motorcycle and says that we need to hurry. After a while, the man ran into the house and apologized to everyone for being so late. He asked how Marie was doing. Everyone was very surprised. Marie was just sniffing at that moment. Kanishi realized that, apparently, it was difficult to stay ahead. Suddenly, the babysitter rushed to Kanishi with apologies. The man said that, as an anthropomorph, he was ashamed that he had left him in the forest. Kanishi said that Marie's life was more important. He knows how to use magic, and he also had a great forest cat with him. 
The nurse thanked the sacred great forest cat. Kanishi then asked the woman how Marie was doing. Grandma replied that everything was fine and everything was thanks to the chicory fever fruit that Kanishi had obtained. Then Curtin bowed and thanked Kanishi, saying that she would now owe him. Curtin's wife was standing next to him, crying and thanking the man. Kanishi thought that he wasn't going to be involved in saving people, but the child's life was at stake. After a while, Mir shouted about the black wolves, the spring and the elves. She asked why the man hadn't invited her along. Kanishi replied that he couldn't afford not to leave Buttercup alone. He couldn't let Mira fight. Mir became sad and said she agreed. Buttercup thanked Kanishi for saving her and Marie. Kanishi then looked at the girls and said that he had not come empty-handed. After a while, Kanishi prepared the elves' drink. Mir was very happy and said that it was very tasty and what a wonderful drink it was. Buttercup added that it is very sweet and a little bitter, but delicious. It took some time and Marie recovered completely. Curtin and his family decided to move to the safe domain of Baron Nosbalk. While everyone was packing, Kanishi wished Curtin a good trip. The man thanked Kanishi. Then the man gave Buttercup a book and told her to give it to Marie. The girl took the book and ran to Marie. Then Buttercup ran up to Marie and said that she and Kanishi had made this picture book. He says he's giving this book to Marie. Buttercup smiles and pulls the girl a book and wishes her luck. Marie cried and agreed. The girls hugged and cried together. Kanishi gives Curtin a letter and a pouch. He says it's a promised letter of recommendation. He pointed out that Curtin worked as a civil servant in five more gold coins as a farewell. Curtin said they owed Kanishi, so they would never forget it. Kanishi replied that it was because Marie was playing with Buttercup. Then Curtin and his wife nodded to each other, and then handed Kanishi the rings. Curtin asked Kanishi for forgiveness and said that this was the only valuable thing. Kanishi was surprised and asked if these were really wedding rings. Curtin replied that they had bought them at a hardware store a long time ago. He asks Kanishi to accept them, even though they cost less than a gold coin. He also told Kanishi to consider it as collateral for the money he borrowed from him. Curtin then gets into the carriage and thanks Kanishi, and then wishes him luck. The carriage began to drive away and Marie looked out to see Buttercup. Buttercup noticed the girl and ran to Marie, wishing she wasn't sick. Marie cried in response and wished Buttercup the same. Kanishi noticed Buttercup's upset look. He took the camera and showed the girl the photo to the elf. Buttercup said that this is a very beautiful drawing and these girls have long ears. Kanishi said that Buttercup was right and it was them. He made a deal with them and got a ring with which to communicate with them. Then he showed her a picture of a forest kitten. Buttercup said that this kitten is so round and cute. Mir said that even she sees a forest kitten for the first time. At that time, a girl was walking through the forest and laughing maliciously. She walked through the forest and talked about how she would not forgive Kanishi. Suddenly, after these words, Kanishi felt something. Primura, when she saw Kanishi, at first thought that he was an inconspicuous middle-aged man with a small shop. However, he turned out to be quite pleasant to talk to and literate, as if he came from the nobility or worked as a civil servant. Also, his jewelry was made by a sophisticated technique unknown to her. She thought that he was not a blunderer and it seemed that he had an inventory. Due to the fact that she met Kanishi with her father, unusual goods appeared in their Maroi trading company, and they became more famous among the nobility. The new mode of transport that he proposed helped them get a surname and a vocation. Nehru told Primura that Kanishi helped them raise their status. He needs to be properly thanked. Primura agreed with her father and thought that she should make him her own at any cost. However, he was principled. A beastman girl was spinning next to him, and she stepped over herself, took a bath and slept in the same bed, but he did not even reach her. Despite this, Kanishi saved her from bandits, so Primura decided that she would go with him to the very end. Although he took care of the injured girls and children, but among the many women, for sure, she stands in the first place. As soon as the answers about the incident are over, you will need to put yourself in order and meet Kanishi again because for sure he is waiting for her. However, when the mayor came to the place where his house was, there was nothing there. The Primura did not understand why everything had disappeared, because a small house stood here, as well as a fence and a vegetable garden. She doesn't understand why everything has disappeared. Kanishi and the girl left without telling her anything. Primura felt some pain and, as if she had gone mad, began to laugh. She walked through the city and showed no emotion. Kanishi started at that moment. The woman from the hardware store asked him why he was twitching so much. Kanishi replied that he thought he saw someone's murderous gaze. The woman asked the man why he came to the city today. Kanishi replied that he would like to take back that magic book and ask about butchering the captured beast. He was recently attacked by a large fanged bear, but it turned out to be huge, and he couldn't butcher it. It is better to ask for help from the Adventurer's Guild. 
The woman agreed and said that they would pay well for the skin and fangs. She also said that Kanish's book has already been registered. Kanishi thought that the cover was sturdy and reliable, and there was even some kind of stone on the back. The woman said it was a magic stone. He and the spells in the book are linked, so they won't work without the stone. Kanishi said he didn't really understand, but it means that the spell book won't just be rewritten. The woman agreed and said that magic stones are worn by monsters, but sometimes they are sold in the adventurer's guild. That's why he can buy everything himself. Kanishi thought that the alchemical thing he had recently bought from his grandmother was successfully used in the manufacture of biodiesel, so he hoped that this book would help him in some way. Then he decides to sell the accumulated medicinal herbs to the guild, then decides to cut up the fanged bear. But before that admire the beauty, a guild employee saw Kanishi and asked what he had brought there this time, probably either for sale or butchered. Kanishi agreed with the man. Kanishi said that quite a lot had accumulated, both large and smaller, so he would not be able to get it here. The man realized that Kanishi was with the inventory, so he invited him to go through from the back. Kanishi then takes out the loot. The man is surprised and says that it is a fang bear and it is quite large. Kanishi said he had 12 more black wolves. He would like to ask the man to carve up meat and magic stones, because he wants to sell the rest. The man agreed. He gives me a sword and says he's going to work. We would not like to miss such a large prey. We need to cut it up as soon as possible, because such an opportunity has presented itself. Kanishi thought that the man had said that he would finish everything by evening, but since the sun was still high, so he decided to return. After a while, he comes back to the man and tells Kanishi that here are his four gold coins and two silver coins, as well as a magic stone and meat. He rubs his face and tells Kanishi that he is still waiting for a big catch. Kanishi thanked the man and said that he would come again. He warned Buttercup and Mir that maybe he would stop in the city, but if he hurried, he would make it home. Just in case, he left them some fast food. Kanishi realized that it was getting dark quickly here, but suddenly someone grabs his sleeve. He turns around and sees the Primura there. The girl was out of breath and said that she had finally found Kanishi. Kanishi looked at the girl questioningly and asked why she was here. Suddenly, Primura rushed into the man's arms. She screamed and said that Kanishi was a cruel man because he left so unexpectedly. She hadn't expected this from him. Kinishi said that if he was captured by the nobility, he would surely bring trouble to their company. The Primura screamed and said that he would bring them trouble or not, it was up to them, not the man. Kinishi said the company has envious competitors. They could take advantage of his departure and say they didn't think he was that kind of person. Primura said that thanks to Kanishi, they were able to get a surname. Kinishi asked the girl not to get so excited. The man was thinking that quarreling on the street is not the best idea. We need to move to a more peaceful place. He's trying to find some cozy cafe. After a while, they sit down at a table in a local cafe. Kinishi thinks that, naturally, there is no cafe in this world, so he had to go to the snack bar at the hotel. It's better than a diner, especially for the Primura. She herself did not even touch the liver and tells everything about how he helped the Maru Trading Company. Kinishi wondered if he had really helped them out that way even though it seemed to him that the opposite was true. According to the girl, his goods became very popular among the nobility, and they rose in the eyes of the upper class. Thus, their sales increased. Primura also said that Kanishi saved her life. The man thought it was because he hadn't even said goodbye. He said that he had heard a rumor in the city about Baron Nosbalk's proposal. The mayor's office said that she had received it, but refused. Kanishi was surprised and thought that the Baron's dignity had definitely swayed and he was wondering if he was okay. Baron Nosbalk will not just throw away offers. Primura said that people in the city also accused her of being cold. Kanishi said he admits that leaving without warning is not the right thing to do, but he just didn't want to get her into trouble. Kanishi did not let the girl say anything and continued, saying that he was to blame. He understood everything, so the girl should return to Dahlia and tell everyone that everything is fine with him. Primura jumped up and said that she would not return because she had already said goodbye to her father and said that she would not return until she persuaded Kanishi to return. Kanishi thought that Meru was unhappy. He says that he is not going to go back. The Primura said that then she would stay here too. Kanishi asked the girl how she knew he was in Astrans. The mayor replied that she had asked the Merchant Guild and the Adventurer's Guild to check if the man was registered in other cities. Yesterday, when the information came in, we found his name on the lists, so it came right away. Kanishi said that was how the girl got here and searched for him everywhere. He looked at her tired gaze. Kanishi said that he heard the girl, but the city gates will close soon, so you should go to his house outside the city. The mayor's office said she wouldn't go. Kanishi didn't understand what the girl meant. Then Primura said that she would not leave here today until Kanishi made her a woman. 
Kanishi wondered if he would do the right thing. The next morning, Kanishi returns to his home. Buttercup and Mir recognize the sound of the motorcycle and realize that Kanishi had arrived. Kanishi said he was back. The girls were delighted, but Mir noticed someone and asked the man who was sitting behind her. Mir recognized the smell and realized that it was Meru's daughter. Kanishi thought, considering what happened last night, he brought her here as one of his close people, but he allowed himself to let go, however, it's too late to regret. He, as a man, must pull himself together. Now he has the lives of two girls, one child and a forest cat on his shoulders. Suddenly, Primura asked Kanishi what it meant. He left her in the city and took Mir with him. Kanishi told Primura to be calm, because Mir had tracked her down herself. Mir said that no victim would run away from her. The Primura asked what about Buttercup. Kanishi said that she was a child, so he couldn't leave her on the street. Primura said that she understood and forgives Kanishi for today. Buttercup asked if Primura would really live with them too, because the room would be cramped. Kanishi realized that something seemed to have flared up between the Buttercup and the Primrose. The man told the girls that they would live together, so they should try to make friends. Buttercup told Kanishi not to bring anyone else. Kanishi told Buttercup not to worry. Primura asked Kanishi why there was such a pause and whether it could be that the man had another girlfriend somewhere. How many times can you be so kind? If you help everyone right and left, then there won't be a penny left. Kanishi said he understood that. Suddenly, Vol appeared. Kanishi told the cat that there was one more person. Primura looked at the cat. She asked Kanishi if she was really worse than a forest cat. Kanishi took Vala and said that this was not the case, because the cat also came running after him. After a while, Kanishi decided to cook bear meat for dinner, which he took from the guild. First you need to thinly slice and simply fry. Finally, the grilled meat of the fang bear was ready. Kanishi tasted it and said that the meat was quite tough. The hardness can still be forgiven, but the smell is still a bear. It seems to be the same taste as in the local area. Mir said she doesn't like bear meat. Kanishi said that he didn't know that beastmen had food preferences. Kanishi looked at Buttercup and Primura and thought that the two of them didn't really like it either. Kanishi thinks he needs to find a solution. They use a meat hammer to reduce the hardness and to soften the smell, he will prepare a sauce according to a secret recipe. The first ingredient is soy sauce. It needs red pepper and black pepper, as well as dried mandarin peel. Shangri-La peel is sold as a medicine of traditional Chinese medicine. Then Mir said that now the spices are overpowering the smell of game. Eating has become much easier. Kanishi noticed the Primura and said that if she didn't like it, then maybe cook her another meat. The mayor's office said that everything was fine. Kanishi added that they have a lot of bear meat and still need to eat black wolves somehow. The mayor said there was a lot of meat. It is still edible when fried, but if cooked, will it turn out to be tasty enough to cook? In the previous world, he had not tried boiled bear meat, but it is worth looking for good recipes. For example, the smell of mutton and curry almost disappears. So, with the increase in the number of residents in the house, there are some difficulties. For example, taking a bath. Buttercup and Mir wanted to take a bath together with Kanishi. The man told them that there was only one barrel, so someone would have to take a bath tomorrow. The man said that they would not have enough water, although they could make a bigger bath. In the end, he bought another metal barrel. After that, he watches a picture of how the female part of the population at home dries their hair at the fan heater, but today there was a girl with golden hair among them. The next day, he spent the morning trying to find ways to cook bear meat, which they have in abundance. Kanishi realized that it turned out to be quite good. It feels faint aftertaste, but quite tasty. He beat off the meat and then left it in milk overnight, fried it and then added it to the curry, while he puts the finished meat in the inventory. If the girls don't really like bear meat, then he will only have more. The second recipe is also to chop off the meat and rub in spices and herbs, and then leave to marinate, if for frying, then in brandy, and if for cooking, then in wine. Kanishi tries it and thinks it's perfectly cooked, exactly in the style of European cuisine. The aftertaste remains, but very little. As soon as there is time, you can simply prepare all the meat and leave it in the inventory. He fed everyone curry for dinner. Buttercup and Mir said that everything turned out very tasty. Kanishi thought that the two of them definitely liked him. The Primura asked if even such meat with a smell could be cooked so deliciously. Kanishi said there was a slight aftertaste left, but it was pretty good. Although it has a special smell, other animals also have it. The Primura said that in the hands of a man, any meat turns into a wonderful dish. Kanishi told the girl not to flatter him. However, you have to spend a lot of time and sweat a little. Mir said that the vegetables are also not bitter at all, as if by magic. 
The Primura said that even though they were bought on the market, they do not taste bitter and do not knit at all. This can be removed by immersing them in water with settled ash in it. No need to cook, you just need to leave it overnight. As she said earlier, Kanishi is a very smart person. Kanishi smiled and thought that it was even kind of awkward after such words. Maybe he can use magic to remove the bitterness in vegetables or even cook in general. Then the man thinks about magic and realizes that he has completely forgotten about the magic book that he bought from grandma. There's a lot of stuff written here, but the point is to concentrate magical power from the whole body into one place. He wonders if this is really possible, because he doesn't understand at all. For example, for the flame of anger magic technique, you need to gather all the power in your fingertips and palms. It's better to act than just sit and guess. He summons the flame of anger and asks her to burn the enemies in front of his eyes. However, nothing happened and Kanishi realized that he had no magic abilities. Kanishi then asked the Primura if the magic attributes were selling well. The girl agreed and said that there are many avid collectors, even those who do not know how to use magic. Kanishi thinks that if there are such collectors, then you can easily find a buyer. It's a bit of a pity, but I'll have to sell the book. Suddenly, Buttercup began to pronounce the slaughter of the flame of anger. The man asked the girl to stop and not to cast a spell. Suddenly, something caught fire in front of the girl. Kanishi got scared and said they needed a fire extinguisher. He bought three fire extinguishers and told the mayor to take a fire extinguisher and repeat after him. He tells her to pull out a yellow stick and squeeze a black pen. The girl asked if she was doing the right thing. Eventually, the fire was extinguished, and Buttercup stood very surprised and held a book. Kanishi realized that the fire had engulfed a fairly large area, but if you look closely, only the surface was burned, and the wall itself was intact. He's not very strong, but an ordinary person definitely wouldn't survive. However, first of all he looked at Buttercup, who was shaking with horror and apologizing to the man. Kanishi took Buttercup by the shoulders and said that it was very cool, because Buttercup could use magic. The girl was very surprised. Lear was happy and said that now they would take down the Fang Bear. Kanishi said that no one would buy a burnt hide. Nier agreed. Suddenly, Buttercup fell down, and her whole face turned red. Kanishi turned to Buttercup and asked what was wrong with her. Primura said that, most likely, she felt sick from an overabundance of magic. This is often the case with children who have used it for the first time. She tells Kanishi that she needs to be put to bed. Replacing each other, they monitored the girl's condition and by morning the temperature had completely subsided. There are no good doctors in this world, so you need to take care of your health. She's not very cheerful, but she seems to be healthy. However, he does not want to eat at all. She must have wasted all her appetite overnight. He cooked something and said that now he would give her what they always eat when they have a cold. The man takes out canned peaches. Buttercup asked who it was. The man replied that it was fruit and sweet juice. They are usually eaten when they are sick. Buttercup says they are very sweet and delicious. The man replied that since they had opened, they would have to try everything. Nier was delighted and said that he looked a little like an apple. The Primura replied that it was very tasty and so sweet. There must have been a lot of sugar used here. Kinishi said that it is possible to prolong the life of products not only by salting, but also by candying. The girl said that only people who know can afford this method. Kanishi said that the girl was right and in this country his purchase and sale was in the hands of the authorities. And yet, Kanishi can't help but wonder that Buttercup has the ability to do magic. Primura said that she was definitely born with them. Kanishi asked the Primura if it was possible to learn magic somewhere, like a school or something like that. The girl replied that there was an academy in the capital. After graduation, you can become a holy magician. Kanishi told Buttercup that if she wanted to, she could go to the magic school, because there was a dormitory there. The mayor said that either the nobility or the children of the largest merchants study at the academy, so it will be hard for a child from a low class. Kanishi said he was imagining it. Buttercup said she didn't want to leave Kanishi. Kanishi said he wasn't forcing it. However, as she wants, she must definitely tell him. However, with magic, she would be able to feed herself even as a girl. Primura said that only with fire magic she could be sent to the battlefield on the contrary. Kanishi thought that there was still an option to apprentice to a magician for payment or buy books with magic spells. However, there is an important condition everywhere. Kanishi realized that Buttercup would be able to heat the tub. Primura laughed and said that this was the first time she had heard of such a method of using fire. Buttercup said she would try. Kanishi thought he could rely on her. When the wall was repaired and the barn was redone at the same time, also setting up barricades against fang bears and other large predators, Primura said that she wanted to trade in astrons. It happened during the herb harvest. Kanishi said that Primura is the daughter of a merchant, so she is probably registered with the merchant guild. 
The Primura agreed. Kinishi said he had nothing to sell right now because he had left almost everything in Dahlia. However, all he had left of the new ones were books with drawings. The Primura was very surprised. She started reading them and said that they were just wonderful, and they would definitely be sold out. Kinishi thought he wouldn't explain how he made them. Printing technology has not yet appeared in this world. However, this is not enough. He thinks that maybe it's worth selling the vegetables as soon as they ripen. As a result, on the initiative of the Primura, they settled on a pot of few of bear meat and boiled apples and sweet juice. The girl came up with apples and juice after canned peaches. Kinishi hopes that Primura will succeed. Primura was so eager to trade in Astrance that the very next day he began to teach her cooking. She decided to make a pot of few of bear meat and apples and sweet juice. It is necessary to prepare vegetables and meat in the evening, and use the rest of the ingredients in the morning. Apples need to be peeled, boiled and added so much sugar that they can be justified by the natural sweetness of the fruits themselves. If you compare it with what is sold in the city, then this is heaven and earth, as if from a restaurant. Apples and juice also smell great, sweet and delicious. They will definitely buy it. Starting tomorrow, the Primera will cook by herself. She asks Kanishi to lend her a magic charcoal stove. Kanishi agreed and said he would explain how to use it. Primura claims that she will soon save up and buy her stove, so she only borrows it. They put all the things in the inventory, and he took the Primura to the gates of the city. He had never encountered monsters on the way, but walking was a bit dangerous. Kinishi said he would pick up the Primura in the evening. Kinishi had already arrived at the market in the evening. He saw the Primura, who was standing and talking to the animal girl. Primura noticed Kinishi and ran up to him. Kinishi asked Primura if she could sell everything. The girl agreed and said that the young man's dishes were the most delicious in the city. No one can resist an ordinary shop that sells restaurant dishes. Kinishi then points at the anthropomorph and asks who she is. The girl says that she is pleased to meet you and her name is Nyamna. Primura said that she was alone, so excessive male attention was focused on her, and she decided to pay Nyamna for her protection. The woman said she couldn't give up such an easy job. You just need to look at men with an evil look and get one small silver coin a day for it. Kinishi opened the inventory, and Nyamna was very surprised, as she had not seen the inventory for a long time. Primura told Kinishi what she was thinking and what about inviting Nyamna to dinner. She would like to maintain a good relationship with her. Kinishi agreed and said that she was protecting her. Then they go outside the city. Nyamna is surprised and says that this is the same transport. She did not think that he was capable of driving in the forest at such a speed and did not even need to move his legs. Kinishi asked to leave it without comment. Then they arrive at the house and Nyamna says that Primura and Kanishi live in a beautiful place. Primura says that she was also able to sell that book for two small silver coins. Kanishi said there were 18 books, totaling just under one gold coin. Primura agreed, and then said that she was asked for more ideas for books that are with girls. Nyamna added that men only think about it. Kanishi realized that if it was going to be financially very tight, then there was such an option. The information is quite important. At this moment, Mir leaves the house. Mir hysterically asks Kanishi what kind of woman she is and points to Nyamna. Kanishi replies that she was hired by the mayor's office, so they will treat her to dinner. Mir said she thought Kanishi had a girlfriend again. At that moment, Vol came out of the house. Kanishi started stroking the cat's head. Kanishi said he was at home and called the cat nice. Nyamna was surprised that it was a forest cat. Nyamna said she understood why the man lives in the wilderness. It's all because he has a magic trolley and a forest cat. Kinishi thought he was glad that the girl was quite honest. After a while, the cream soup and soft rolls were ready. Nyamna did not understand what kind of white soup it was, but Buttercup and Mir were happy about this delicious soup, since they already knew what it was. Kinishi said he added flour and milk to the soup, so it's white. The other beastman liked it too, so he thinks that Nyamin will like it too. Nyamna tastes a spoonful of soup and says it is very tasty. The girl says that this soup melts in your mouth and has such a deep taste. Kinishi said that he was glad that the girl liked it, and then said that he had forgotten about the hot drink and asked the girl if she would have a glass. Nyamna said it was just delicious. The food is delicious and strong drinks too, as if she is in some kind of paradise. Kinishi then asked the girl if she would take a bath. Nyamna was surprised and asked what kind of bath the young man was talking about. After a while, they gathered by the water barrel. Kinishi told Buttercup that she couldn't hold back. Buttercup stretched her arms out and began to cast a spell. Buttercup used the flame of anger. At one point, the barrel was completely surrounded by bright flames. Everyone around was surprised. The explosive power is impressive, but it doesn't hold at all, the fire is already so small. Kinishi checks the water and thinks it's already hot. 
Buttercup was able to heat the tub in 30 minutes faster than if he had heated it in the usual way. Kanishi asks if it is possible to use magic so often, even though there are only two barrels, but she recently lost consciousness. The Primura said that the more often you use magic, the faster she will be able to control it. After a while, Nyamna takes a bath and says that she really is bathing in the bathtub, like some minister or nobleman. She's definitely in heaven. Kanishi asked if it was hot. Nyamna said that everything is fine and it's just great. Even if there was a bathhouse in the city, they, the beastmen, are forbidden entry. Then they arrived home and Nyamna flopped into bed and said that the bed was so soft and maybe she should stay here. Mir said that it was impossible, because there would be very little room in the room. Nyamna said that she did not think that one person would interfere with them so much. Mir said that it was impossible anyway and she would not let the girl live here. At that moment, Nyamna turned her attention to Kanishi and Buttercup. She asked if the man was really teaching the girl to read and write. Kanishi would agree and said that reading, writing and counting would help her find a job. Moreover, girls do not have much choice where to work. Naimna said that was true. A girl without an education can only use her body. Kanishi asks Buttercup if she should learn how to trade from the Primura. The girl says that she wants to learn how to use magic and she will help the man and go on adventures with him. Kanishi was surprised and said that, to be honest, he would not want to fight anyone. Buttercup said Kanishi could even kill a dragon. Kanishi said not to exaggerate, because three lives wouldn't be enough for him. Buttercup said that there was someone in the empire who could kill a dragon. Naimna said she had heard the story too. The magician killed him with magic. Kanishi asked if dragons were really vulnerable to magic and if there was any benefit from the dragon at all. Naimna said that meat, fangs, as well as scales, dragon liver and amber. Dragons are like treasure chests. Kanishi asked if the meat of the dragons was delicious. Naimna nodded. Kanishi said that he would like to try it and then asked about that magician and said if he became very rich after killing the dragon. If he was just a magician, then yes, but he was the princess's personal wizard, so she took all the proceeds. The princess invested this money in the war for the throne, on which the emperor wanted to put his second daughter. Kanishi said it was intriguing. Naimna replied that for the nobility from the periphery or merchants, this is a great moment to break into the capital. Kanishi said it was about the Einsters and Nubatan house. Naimna substituted that Kanishi knows everything. Kanishi then asked Primura how she met Naimna. Primura said she was one of the buyers. Naimna said it was so delicious that she asked for more. Primura said that she thought that she, the girl, should also be protected by a girl, especially since anthropomorphs are very strong. Naimna said that she was 100% sure of her hands. Nevertheless, Primura is doing well. She cooks and sells herself, so she's quite fearless. Kanishi said that her father was also a good merchant. Naimna said that now it is clear why. Primura said that Kanishi was also selling something and why he stopped. Kanishi replied that he had saved up enough, so now he is taking a break from work and moreover, he has something to do. Naimna said that he was quite strange for a merchant. They only think about money, they are even ready to sell their family for their own benefit. Then she came to her senses and told Primura that she wasn't talking about her. The Primura laughed and said that was true. Kanishi said that, simply put, he wants to live a measured life. The next day, Kanishi stood near a huge rock and was very surprised. He said that up close it was like a wall, probably about 10 meters high. He's trying to figure out how to climb it. This morning Kanishi was thinking that everything was going smoothly with the Primura shop. But what would he do? I would like to explore new places, but there are monsters in the forest, and he is a little afraid to swim across the lake. Then he remembers that there is a cliff behind the house, and behind it, it seems, there is a forest. If it is not touched by people, then it is definitely rich in useful herbs. There are no monsters and many necessary plants. He decides to climb the plateau, but it's not in my power. To begin with, he launches the drone and says that he needs to at least inspect it. Kanishi sees that the forest continues from above and does not seem to cross into any mountain. There is no road to withdrawal, nor any signs of human use of this forest. Kanishi thinks there are definitely a lot of herbs and leafy vegetables there. Suddenly, Buttercup interrupts his thoughts. The girl runs up and says that this thing is very cool. She holds binoculars in her hands. Buttercup adds and says that you can see so far. She asks Kanishi if he was really considering something. Kanishi said it wasn't that, but he just wanted to get in. Buttercup was delighted and said that there were so many orange crystals. Kanishi was very surprised. He asked Buttercup to give him binoculars for a second. Kanishi saw the orange crystals. However, he had not seen stones of this color. He hopes they are worth a lot. Kanishi said that they are quite far away, so they will probably need a car tower. 
Using a laser rangefinder bought on Shangri-La, he found out that the crystals were 12 meters away. It turned out to be not very convenient to use the car tower every time. He decides that there is still an option to build scaffolding, as on the lines. The man decides to get an excavator. To begin with, he prepares the kidney, and then takes out materials for the construction of scaffolding, pipes, joints, and more. Mir came up to Kanishi and asked what he was doing. Kanishi said he decided to build a structure made of metal tubes so that he could climb the cliff. Beyond the cliff, in the forest, there are probably a lot of untouched animals and herbs. Mir says she will help too. Buttercup also supports Mir. Kanishi thanked the girls. Then the grandiose construction began. With the help of Mier and Buttercup, the scaffolding was ready in three days. Kanishi said that everything is fine and ready. He called everyone well done. Suddenly, Mier began to deftly climb up the building. Mier was happy and said that everything was very high. Buttercup said that's what she wants too. Kanishi realized that girls have no boundaries of joy. After a while, the girls watched the construction in surprise. Naimna asked what it was. Kanishi replied that this way he would be able to get to the plateau. Suddenly, the Primer returned to Kanishi. The girl said that she had wanted to ask for a long time. There are so many things in his inventory like these pipes and those soft buns that they eat every day too. Kanishi said that Primura had noticed after all. In fact, he uses magic to bake buns. The Primura asked what it meant. Kanishi put his arm around Primura's waist and said that she now trusts him less and less. Then he pulled the girl to him and kissed her. He said that if the girl wanted to return home, she'd better do it now. The Primura melted and said that she would not come back. Kanish's hand slid further and squeezed the soft shape of the Primura. Suddenly, Iz called Nemen and said that they could not do this at home, because it was somehow awkward for her. Kanishi asked Naimna if such a pretty girl didn't have a partner. Naimna replied that she herself refuses worthless men. The next morning, Kanishi asked the mayor if they needed to go to the city. The Primura said she was also interested in what was up there. Naimna replied that she was also interested. Kanishi asked if no one had really been there yet. Naimna agreed and said that no one but a man is capable of building such a thing. Except by order of the Empire, there is no one to level the ground and build a ladder. At least, she had never heard of such a thing. Kanishi said that there are many people in the world. It would not hurt to have one eccentric among them. Naimna said that it means that the man is the first such eccentric. Kanishi thought that he was really strange, from another world after all. Then he said he wanted to collect more crystals. Forests will also be used for this purpose. Naimna said they were very beautiful and probably expensive. Kanishi said he wouldn't know until he got them. Then she climbed onto the building and said that it remained to finish the way to the very top. He puts down the board and climbs to the top. Kanishi was very surprised by the beautiful view. Buttercup told Kanishi that she wanted to see it too. Then he took turns helping the girls up. Buttercup was very surprised. She said the lake was in the palm of her hand. Even the village of Ixora is visible. Naimna said that they were really able to climb so high. Primura said that everyone is equally surprised. Then they start walking around the new territory. Mir shouted at Kanishi and said that she had found something, and then called the man. The girl found the lone sharks and said they were very tasty. Kanishi said they would pack and cook dinner with them. Buttercup called Kanishi and said that she had found the red room. Naimna said that she would also help to search, because her nose is very good. She won't stand on ceremony. Mir asked Naimna why she was helping them. Kanishi thought that it seemed that he had not lost on the plateau. The next morning, Kanishi bought 30 Gyozo mugs cut out of dough. Primura asked Kanishi what it was. Kanishi said that these are thinly sliced circles. Kanishi said that meat and vegetables should be wrapped in them, and then fried. He decided to cook Gyoza from those lone sharks that they found while exploring the plateau. He calls Buttercup and tells the girl to wash her hands and put meat in the device and turn the handle. Buttercup asked what this device was doing. Kanishi said that he was chopping the meat into small pieces and they would already come out on the other side. Buttercup did the job assigned to her and said it was very cool and incredibly fun. Kanishi then gives Primura the task of cutting the vegetables as small as possible. The girl agreed and said what it was. Kanishi said that only the leaves were edible. Gyoza without Peking cabbage is not gyoza. Although in the parental home, it happened that ordinary cabbage was added. For vegetables, and for the dough, you could use a mixer or a food processor, but he decided that it was better to use working hands, since they are there. Minced meat, salt, and a little Chinese seasoning should be added to the chopped cabbage. You can also not forget the stars of today's dish, pawnbrokers, and mix everything well. Then you need to wrap the finished filling in the dough. Spread water with a small amount of flour along the edge of the dough, and it just remains to fold in half. In fact, you need to bend it, but this is a simpler option. 
He ends up asking Buttercup if she will do it and if she can handle it. The girl agrees and says she will do it. Kanishi told Primera that she could start frying. The Primera agreed. After a while, everything was ready and Mier and Nyamna began to eat everything. The girl said that it was very tasty and really bear meat could turn into such a delicious dish. Kanishi told the girls to stop eating on the same plate because they would not be able to count how much they got later. Everything was finally ready. Kanishi thought that was enough for everyone. There is only gyoza for lunch, but they are made of vegetables, meat and wheat dough. Almost a full meal. He prefers to use soy sauce with butter and chili, but others did not like soy sauce, so he offered them mayonnaise with vinegar and salt. The girl said that it is very tasty and the meat juice spreads in the mouth. Kanishi thought he should try it too. Kanishi tries it and thinks that in the form of gyoza you don't realize at all that it's bear meat. He didn't even expect it to work out so well. The mushrooms have absorbed the juice well and are very juicy. You can make the dough thicker and add it to the soup. The mayor's office said it was a great idea. Kanishi thought that he should try to cook it in his shop. Primura said that it was quite troublesome to cook, so she needed to hire someone from the city to help her with cooking. Kanishi realized that Primura was thinking just like a merchant. He always tries to think how to solve it himself, but the girl takes hiring people into account from the very beginning. Primura asked Kanishi what kind of powder he adds during cooking. Kanishi said it was dried fish and seaweed separated into powder. Gives the taste depth. Mir said that now it is clear why she sometimes felt the smell of fish in the meat dish. Kanishi said that using dried fish in its entirety in soup is not easy, because an unpleasant smell appears. The Primura exhaled and said that no matter how you look at it, you can't cook a delicious dish without hard work and good knowledge. After lunch, everyone went about their business. Kanishi began to explore the orange crystals that were right on the cliff. He's thinking about how to assemble them. Kanishi decides to take a regular jackhammer. This is the one that cement is allowed on construction sites. He buys an electric jackhammer. Kanishi starts hitting stones with a hammer. The man picks up the fallen piece and points it at the light. Kanishi says that the stone is quite beautiful, but he does not remember something so orange stone. He puts it in his inventory and sees that the stone is called rhodonite. Kanishi realizes that apart from this information, he can't find out anything else. He had never heard of such a stone before. It's time to discover Shangri-La, so he decides to try to learn from this book. He reads the information. Rhodonite or ruby twine is one of the types of silicate minerals. They are found in manganese deposits. Kanishi thinks he's really worth it. Only those who understand the price know. It is only necessary to give the Shangri-La site an estimate of what has been extracted. He hopes that he will be able to determine the price of the product. According to the results, this stone can be sold for 200,000 yen. Kanishi was very surprised that this stone could be sold for 200,000 yen. Although, if it were a gemstone of the same size, it would be much more expensive. For example, if you compare it with diamonds, then rhodonite costs quite a bit. The price tag of diamonds or rubies reaches 100 million yen. However, now he has found out that it is worth something and has already reimbursed the cost of the jackhammer. There are still a lot of orange stones left, so is this really a great catch? Probably with rhodonite as well as with all precious stones, the larger it is, the more it costs. This is excellent. Rhodonite is an estimated value of 400,000 yen, 600,000 yen. Kinishi was glad that the costs were covered with the remainder. Moreover, thanks to him, the money of this world will not disappear into a black hole called Shangri-La. Kinishi threw a stone to Buttercup and said that it was the stone that he had mined on the cliff. Buttercup was delighted and said that he was very handsome. The mayor asked how much it cost. Kinishi replied that he did not know, so he would have to ask his grandmother at the hardware store. On Shangri-La, Rodenite costs 200,000, but he does not know how much this stone will cost in this world. If they take a few gold coins for it, it would be better to exchange them for money in the city. Kanishi then asked where Mier and Naimna were and where they had gone. The Primura replied that she did not know, but she thought they would be back for dinner. After a while, Kanishi poured water into the hot oil in a frying pan. Buttercup was scared, but Kanishi said that Buttercup's magic is much scarier. Then Vol came out. Kanishi said that even Vol came to the smell of roast meat. After a while, Mier and Naimna returned. Kanishi told them that they had been walking for quite a long time, so he did not realize how deep they were in the forest. Nayana replied that they were very far away. As Kanishi said, the plateau goes on almost indefinitely, and there are no monsters at all. However, there were birds there. 
She asked the young man to put them in inventory until they were taken to the city for sale. Lear asked the man to put her down too. Kinishi agreed and said he would pick one up for lunch. In total, they got three each. Naimna said she was not sorry. They serve something that no amount of money can buy in the city. Mir then hands Kanishi more items. The man asks what it is. The girl replies that these are Kaka's eggs. It is considered a delicacy, and poultry meat is also very tasty. Primura asked the girl what she was saying, because she didn't like the bear steak for dinner. Naimna said that, on the contrary, the meat is too tasty now. The girl said that it was not the smell of wine at all. Kinishi replied that he added alcohol to soften the smell of game. Naimna heard about the strong drink and said that she had a request for Kanishi. Apparently, she wants to try a strong drink, that is, brandy, which he used when frying meat. Kinishi said he was pretty tough, so the girl should be more careful. Naimna was surprised by the fragrance. Kinishi then asked the girl how the drink tasted to her. Naimna said that if she continued to live such a prosperous life, she would not be able to live in the city again. After such a meal, she will not be able to eat what they sell in the city. Nier adds that the meat is delicious and she did not think that bear meat could be cooked so deliciously. Buttercup also said that the meat is very tasty. The mayor's office said that with these they can open an elite shop. Suddenly, Nakanishi rushed at Kanishi and asked the man what he had done to her. She says that after such delicacies, she will not be able to live in the city because she is not even to blame for this. Kinishi asked why she was so clinging and hugged him very hard. Nier shouted for Naima to get off Kanishi. Naima told the girl not to worry because she won't take him away because she just wants him to give her delicious food and live nearby. Kinishi told Primura that if she didn't mind, then so did he. Primura pouted and said that she did not mind because, apparently, Naima only wants to eat and drink delicious food. Then the Primura turned to Kanishi and asked if they had any more bear meat. Kanishi agreed and said there was a lot of it. The Primura was preparing food for tomorrow at that moment. Kanishi thought that he would also go to the city with her and sell the birds. And you should also ask Grandma how much the stones cost. The next morning, Kanishi thought that Naimna had drunk quite a lot yesterday. You will need to ask her intentions about settling in with them. Kanishi calls the girl and asks her if she is definitely going to move in with them. He hopes she remembers what she said yesterday. Naimna replied that the drinks were really strong, but she wasn't that drunk. The girl says she was serious about living here. Kinishi takes out his inventory and says he only has this. He's putting up a makeshift house. Naimna is surprised that it is made of steel plates. Kinishi said he made it to protect himself from monsters. Then they go inside. Kinishi says he's putting up the bed the girl slept on yesterday. Then he asks the girl if she doesn't mind that he rents out this house. Naimna asks if she will have to pay a lot. Kinishi replies that there is no need to pay if the girl helps the Primura all the time. Naimna was surprised. They were interrupted by the Primura and asked if they had finished the housewarming. Kanishi agreed. Mir was in shock. Mir said that Naimna would live in a separate house and sleep in another bed. Kinishi asked the girl to imagine that there was just one more villager. After a while they arrive in the city and the mayor says that they always trade here. Then they saw a crowd of people. The woman told them to open the shop quickly, because everyone had already gathered. The Primura replied that they needed a minute, and they would prepare everything. Naimna asked everyone to get in line. After a while, Kanishi turned to the woman and asked her why she was buying food in such a large jug. The woman replied that it was for tonight and tomorrow morning. There are a lot of vegetables and meat in the soup. Moreover, one serving costs only five small silver coins. No one can find such a delicious soup for such money. Kinishi thought that Primura's shop already had regular customers. Tasty and inexpensive, this is the key to a successful business. After a while, at the Adventurer's Guild, the receptionist girl said that they did not accept minerals. If someone had requested an assignment to mine the stones, then in that case, they would have bought them. She says Kanishi should go to the hardware store. Kanishi thanks the receptionist girl. Kanishi greets a woman. She asks him if he has brought anything interesting. Kanishi agrees and says that he brought the orange-colored stones, and then asks the woman how much she will value them. The woman replies that they will be worth about one gold coin. Kanishi realizes that this is about 200,000 yen and the same amount they are sold on Shangri-La. He tells the woman that he wants to sell them. She then asks about the spell book and says if it helped Kanishi. The man agrees and adds that he did not succeed, but the girl was able to use one spell. She asks the man if he wants to send her to the academy. Kanishi replies that they talked about it, but she doesn't want to at all. The woman replied that by enrolling in the academy, she could at least become the mistress of a major merchant or nobility. Kanishi says that he has heard that there are only such people, so it will be very difficult for her to enroll. The woman agrees. Kanishi asks the woman if she went to the academy. 
The woman agrees and replies that it was a long time ago. She was very young then. She herself is flattered to say this, but the students of the academy called her the flower of the academy. Kinishi says that according to the words, no matter what she does, standing or sitting, she was like a peony. And when it comes, it's like a lily has opened its petals. The woman says that she was compared to Lily, the future mistress of the nobility. She even gave birth to a child. Kinishi asks what happened to him. The woman replies that the nobility took him away, but they gave her the money and they haven't seen each other since. She opened this shop with these funds. The issue of inheritance is becoming very acute among the nobility, so it was important for them to control everything. Kinishi asks if she has any desire to meet him. The woman responds positively and says that she has already been given money for not meeting him. It was from the Marquis family. Then the woman translates the topic and says that Buttercup can read. Kinishi replies that he would like Buttercup to be able to learn magic. If there are books of magic with fire spells, then he is ready to redeem them. The woman replies that she will try to find something. After a while, Kinishi walks through the city and thinks that he has sold all the stones, so he will return to the Primeura. Kinishi notices a young girl. He asks the mayor who it is. The Primeura replies that this is her student. The girl asks Kanishi if he is the father of the mistress. She says her name is Iris and she is very pleased to meet you. Kanishi awkwardly says that he is not Primeura's father at all. Iris asks if this means that he is Primeura's husband. She apologizes. Primeura says his name is Kanishi and he is her husband. Kanishi asks if Iris will help Primeura. The girl agrees and says that she will teach her cooking and trading, and then they will open a second shop. Kanishi thought that was who the real merchant was. Primeura is not going to give up. The mayor says that, as a last resort, you can leave everything on the second bench and Iris. If Kanishi runs away again, she can quickly catch up. According to the mayor, Iris is the daughter of a civil servant and she is also literate. Iris was given the condition that if she did not get a job, she would be forced to get married. So while looking for a job, she saw a girl who was trading alone. Kanishi thinks that, nevertheless, it's not noon yet and there's only half of the soup left. Primura asks Kanishi if he could borrow another magic coal stove. Kanishi agrees. After a while, Kanishi returns and tells Primura that it seems they even sold the supplement. Primura agrees. Then she asks if she can invite Iris to our house. She needs to be taught cooking and double entry. She also needs to be taught a lot more. Kanishi thinks that Primura is going to make a leader out of Iris and give all his powers, including training others to trade. She is quite different from her, who sells as she pleases. Kanishi says he doesn't mind, but he doesn't understand how they'll get there. Naimna says she will carry the girl on her back. Kanishi replies that there was such an option. He thinks that there was a case when the beastman carried him on his back, so that one girl Namina will definitely be able to lift. This is how they return home. Iris was very surprised by the speed of the Nyamine, and Kanishi and Primura just smiled, looking after them. 